22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. The any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. And either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. When we open our eyes today and look around America, we see America not through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it. And are not afraid to say it. And I'm 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 and I'm not afraid to say it. 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are tuned into Black Westchester Presents. The People Before Politics Radio Show, episode 278. I am your host, A.J. Woodson. I am joined with my lovely co-host, the lovely Latina Lorraine Lopez in the place to be. What's going on, mommy? Hey, A.J. <laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up? Shout out to Marvin Church, who's tuned in. Um, Dr. Bob may join us at some point at the end of the show somewhere. He's riding around doing some family stuff, um, chilling with his son, got to take his son back home. And uh, Damon is supposed to join us at some point, possibly today as well. So I um, just want to welcome everyone to the show. Um, say what's up to the people, Lorraine. Hey, what's up, people? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so, um, you know, there's a lot going on. We took a brief break. You know, we got the election coming up soon. Um, we originally had three more days to do the census, but it supposedly has been, the extra month has been added back that Trump tried to get rid of, but I yeah. would not count on that. If you can, and if you have not filled out the census, I would try to get it done in the next three days. Because, you know, with all this political stuff going back and forth, Trump playing his foolishness, they are going to appeal that decision for October 30th. You never know what's going on. But you know you have yeah. at least till September 30th. So I say get it done now if you can. It's very easy. Go online, answer 10 questions, 5, 10, 15 minutes, you're done. No immigration questions, no questions about your citizenship. And the information is not available to the public or anybody for 72 years. So you don't have to worry about all that. So anyway, get it done, get counted. Uh, Mount Vernon is up to 56.1% or 0.7% or whatever that is. Um, basically the numbers of the 2010 response, but we were grossly undercounted then. And um, let's, let's, uh, let's get these numbers up. That's all I gotta say about that. So um, uh, do you wanna say anything about the census or we can move on? Yeah, no, no, no. We got to we gotta fill it out. People need to fill it out. Latinos need to fill it out. The black and brown people in Yonkers, you know, we're having a big problem with them. Yes, and um, yeah. there have been a lot, a lot of events going on over this past week and all over Yonkers. Yes, yes, yes. It's Mount Vernon, too. Um, and throughout the county. But um, so, you know, Damon likes to say, Black lives have to matter to for black lives to matter, black lives have to matter to black people first. The same yeah. thing for brown lives to matter. And this yeah. is Hispanic Heritage Month. And the best way to celebrate is by being counted in the census right now. That's the number one thing you can do. It's the easiest non other than voting, this is the most nonviolent thing you can do to forward your community. 
Yeah. Yeah. Count the census and register to vote. Right. Those are the two most nonviolent things you can do that you can do from the the the, the, the safety of your house, your phone, your your computer. You know. Um, is now going on to the voting thing. My advice to everyone who can. Oh, uh, early voting starts in October twenty fourth, which is like twenty seven days or twenty eight days from now, something like that. If you can, go in person. And vote, vote early. Early voting. Yeah. The reason I say this, the Trump administration, the Republicans in the Senate, they're going to do everything to scare you from not voting, to tell you that it's not that that it's already done, it's not gonna count, make all these things for you. The reason they're doing all this, they do not want you to vote. The Republicans are gonna come out in strong numbers. But yeah. they need a lower turnout. A lower turnout benefits the president. A higher turnout benefits uh, Biden. So we need everyone to come out and vote. The One of the other voter suppression things they're trying to do is playing with this postal service, even though they said they backed off, even though they said they're going to reverse all those things. They took boxes off the corners. They, they did all these things. They slowed up the mail. They dismantled the, the they dismantled the machines, the, the uh, copy machines. machines, yeah, right. the sorting the machines, machines, yeah. So, so you know, if you have to do a mail in ballot, request it now. As soon as you get it, send it in now. They tell you it has to be post dated by election day. Let's not play that game. Let's not wait to the last minute. Let's take it out of the Postal Service's hands. So no matter how slow it is, if you do it now, it has to reach them by the, the, the deadline by Election Day. So let's get that. Let's do that. But if you can, I advise those who can vote in the early, vote in person and vote early. So they can't even talk about your mail-in ballots. You and, know what I'm and, and, and another thing that's very important, if you did a write a write in ballot for the primary, you requested a, a ballot by mail and you mailed it in. Do not think that you're gonna get another one for for the general election. You have to request another one for the general election. It is not automatically gonna come to you. The governor's orders were just for the primary, not the general election. Absolutely, and um, shout out to Paul Anthony Cuesta. He hey, said, Paul. "Vote early, vote early. Voter suppression is real in America, and it's yeah. not just in the South in states like Georgia. It's here. the the acts The act of the president um, of um, uh, welcome, welcome, black by popular demand is the man with the plan. The microphone in his hand, <laughs> Damon K. Jones. <laughs> yeah. We we just hey. telling people." Why it's important to vote early, get out, do your vote early, vote early. Um, if you can vote early in person, if you're going to do your mail-in ballot, order it now, fill it out, and send it in now. Don't wait till the last days for the Postal Service to slow down and all that other stuff. Get it done now. And vote like your life depends on it because your life does depend on it. This is the most important election in your life. This is the most, for all those people that say you want change, this is one of the most nonviolent things you can do for change. Absolutely. You I, know, you don't have to be out there on the front line marching. You don't have to do all that other stuff, worry about interaction with people. You can do this. This is a nonviolent way to affect change in your community. That and filling out the census. I just wanted to get those in there. While I got on, I did reach out to Keith. He may, Keith Olson, he may tune in later or not. I wanted to do this, and I definitely want to do this with Damon on. So Lorraine sent me, Lorraine and several other people sent me a video of um, I man, sent you a couple of videos. A, a man in Yonkers in Getty Square running around with a gun. Oh, looked like the whole department was after him. <laughs> they chased him down. They got him down. I think once they got him down, Lorraine, correct me or not, once they got him down, he let off like five shots or something once he was down. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. No, what, what, what happened was they pulled them all at a red light on Riverdale. Okay. He did not, uh, for traffic violation, he did not stop. When they finally got up, when they finally caught up to him, he jumped out of the car. The car was still rolling. 
um, crashed into a couple of cars. Well, the car was still rolling. He ran out, ran up Hudson Street and into Getty Square. Well, that was going on. A police officer tried to uh, jump in the car to start, try to stop it from rolling. He fell. Um, he got hurt. I think he broke a couple of fingers. He fell. The car kept rolling and crashed into several, um, several other, several other cars. Well, that was going. And then another police officer jumped in and a pedestrian and, and a good Samaritan and they, uh, 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 not a good Samaritan, uh, 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 officer that was off duty, a retired officer went in and helped him. Well, that was going on. He ran into Getty Square. If anybody knows Getty Square, it is always packed packed with people he, uh, and minority folks. So he ran in and he had the loaded gun in his hand as he was running through, uh, through Getty Square. He ran, um, he almost crashed into this uh, this lady that was pushing a baby stroller. You could see her on video where she, she pushes the stroller and she starts running away with the stroller. There was this kid in a bike that almost got caught in the mix with him too. He he darted across the street, almost got hit by a police car while he was trying to to um go across this um uh, you know dart across the street in his bike. So they got him as he turned the corner in front of the pharmacy. Um, one a police officer there, um, an older guy actually, I'm very impressed. He um he tackled him. He grabbed him and was able to uh, knock him down to the floor. And that's when they tackled him. When they tackled him, he let out five rounds. Um, those five rounds, they hit uh, a couple of parked cars. They hit a storefront, but they did not hit any, uh, any civilians. They did not hit any police officers. The police officers, they tried to tase him at one point when they were chasing him. The taser did not function. It didn't work, so they weren't able to. They, uh, so they weren't able to taser him. But I've got to tell you, YPD did an amazing job. I don't care what anybody says; they did an amazing job because they could have shot back at him. They could have killed him, and they didn't. Well, and like David said, once he let off the shots, that was open season. I mean, once he shot, they could have just opened fire into him because he shot. He literally shot, but they didn't. But and no, I wanted to say. I wanted to say. One of the cops that was there, he said it. He said they were very aware when they ran into the square. One of the first things that the cops saw was the baby stroller. They saw that baby stroller and they knew if they would have shot, I mean, it could have ricocheted. Anything could have happened. Anything could have happened. And they did not, they did not want, there were kids, there were too many kids there. So my first response, Damon, to Lorraine was, he's got to be white because they apprehended him. <laughs> because and I said, no, in, he in, wasn't. In, in, he in, our experience, in our experience, armed or unarmed, black suspects get killed. And white suspects, like the guy in South Carolina at the church, like the guy in uh, uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, armed and dangerous, get apprehended and they go to jail. Well, let me just say, Lorraine showed me the footage and I finally saw it and it was a black guy, David. And Which I was like, huh? Which and, I was, and I was thorough. So I want to give, this has got to be one of, I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying this never happens, but this got to be one of the first situations that I know of since we've been covering black stuff like this with Black Westchester, that a black suspect who was armed, who let off some shots, was apprehended and taken to, taken to jail and lives. And for that, I, for that one situation, I am very hard and very critical of law enforcement everywhere. I would like to give the Yonkers Police Department their props in handling the situation the way it was supposed to be handled. And furthermore, I want to bring this point out for everyone listening who will watch the show later and who's watching right now, it shows the world that black suspects, black suspects can be apprehended without killing them and taken to jail. Because that is not our experience. 
And even okay, all, let me let me just add to that. Let me just add, let me just add to that. It just shows uh, it, it's a testament to the leader to the leadership of Commissioner Mueller and even Keith Olson when they said, you know, we're going to try to change the culture, we're going to work on changing the culture. Um, not only have they stepped up, you, you we've got the uh, and the mayor, we've got the Black Lives mural that nobody in Westchester County. And what it has done, not even in Mount Vernon, which is a shameful, <coughs> they also put together that police integrity committee with about 21 people in it. Um, they, they're doing the steps necessary that need to be taken. Okay. So I'm giving, I'm giving my YPD props. I'm, I'm giving the city of Yonkers props on this situation again and for the, the painting of the mural. Um, I'm still always vigilantly watching. Um, I, yeah. I don't take this as a permanent change overall. It looks like they are taking the steps necessary, that they are hearing the cries of the community locally and nationwide and even internationally that is demanding better um, handling of uh, of, of between the police and the and the community, and I want. But that's what people want, want, right? That's what right. people are asking for, and, right? And black as black Westchester, I wanted to make sure that I gave them their props in this situation because had it went another way, I would have been critical about a lot of things. Um, actually, actually, me and David were talking. Once he shot them shots, if they shot him, I I probably wouldn't have been as hard on him because that's open season for. He shot. They they have all rights to take him out, and they still not did not. Five and, they still not and, they, and they still did not. So I wanted to give them their props. Um, I invite him for about ten minutes if he can, if he sees the message while we're on, and I will express express that to him myself. But um, I just wanted to do that on the air. Um, David, do you have any words you want to say about the situation or anything, or do you want to add anything to it, or? About the handling of no, I mean, I, I didn't see the video, but at the end of the day, um, not losing a life when someone fires a weapon, um, whether it's civilian or officer, is a great thing. Um, not have you know, not having to shoot the suspect, um, when he has a weapon is a, is a beautiful thing. Um, I think it's a testimony to the to the outcry of the community that um, the community is watching. Um, and it shows that you do not have to um, kill, right? We could, we, we could have, um, we, we could have actual, we, we could have actual restraint in apprehending a victim, even an armed victim. Right. right. So I think a lot of the, a, a lot of the arguments, that people people are giving, you know. Again, I didn't see the video. That 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 that, that we can um, we can apprehend someone without someone dying, right? So you gotta see that video thing. I think we could. Uh, I, I think we could move forward, and and hopefully that um, all the all the committees um, that are being put forward. Um, that we don't go back to square one um, Absolutely. because um, I had this conversation today with the ethical cultural society of Westchester and, 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 my, and my fear is that we're going to have dealing with Westchester, right? Mm -hmm. I can't deal with the rest of New York, right? But dealing with Westchester, we're going to have 49 different packets of police reform, right? All of them talking different shit, right? So, who is who has the last say on what police reform looks like in New York? Why the hell did the governor pass it off to the to, to the police departments, right? How many police departments are in New York? There's four. There's 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 forty. There's forty four just in Westchester County alone. So you know if we have two thousand. 3,000 police departments. Every police department is going to give a packet on police reform? Are you fucking kidding me? Right? So the white communities are going to give something, right? When, do, do white communities need police reform? Are they facing the same issues that black communities are? 
you know, I think this is going to be a, a, a huge quagmire, right? And we're going to be stuck right back in the beginning where we are, where, where police departments throughout the state have different policies, different use of force policies, different continuum force policies. We're going to be right back. I mean, I think the governor, I mean, the governor dropped the ball. He should have put together a panel himself and came up with one packet and said, this is it. This is what, this is what you follow. This is what and you they follow. Don't, and they don't know I'll send it to the state and the state what's out, whatever, and make it into one whole package? Well, why why do that? Why 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 are you getting 2,000 packets and then you're going to make your own packet anyway? That That's a waste, it's a waste of time, right? It's a, it, it, it's a, it's 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 a waste it's a waste of time, you know. Literally, the AG's office or the governor should have appointed um, a task force to do that and 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 look and look at best practices and say this is this is this is what we want um, um, in New York State. Yeah, and and that's the way it should be done because you know you have different people on different on it's just gonna it's it's gonna be a mess. So I just hope. You know that some of these packets look the same, and they're going in the same direction for change um, as it should be. So we we shall see. I have, I have a couple of um, uh, uh, the the committee that the mayor put together. I don't know. Sometimes I question his thinking. He didn't put no youth. You got to put a couple of young guys out there. The guys that are out there that know what's going on. Um, that's number one. And number two, he put people in the committee that don't live in Yonkers. Like, what kind of, I'm trying so. to ask, what kind of shit is that really? I think Hector Santiago wrote a post on Facebook stating just that, that he questioned the people that were on this committee. He, and questioned, the, he questioned the lack of youth. But, but I understand mm -hmm. that, um, during the meeting, the first meeting with the people that had no youth and people from out of Yonkers, um, Jim Bostic, Nepperhan Community Center, he brought it up. He said, we need some youth in here. So kudos to him. And from what I understand, they're going to look into it. Because, come on, like about 21 people and you didn't put some of the, you know, these young guys? Come on. Or, or, or young women? Yeah, because there are young there's young leaders out there that need to be involved. Um, yeah. This movement, this movement, like the civil rights movement, this movie is, movement is led by the youth. It's the youth that went out there. It's the youth that are pushing this. The, 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 you know, it's the youth, and 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 it's their future. And they should have got some sixty of year olds. You got future. sixty year olds there instead of putting those sixty year olds, sixty five year olds, or whatever. Should have put their kids, their grandkids. Well, well, hey, listen, I ain't got nothing. Well, we'll to see do. what happens. You know, I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. What, what, <laughs> I just want to, I just want to, in closer, unless Keep comes on later, in closing, I just want to say on this topic, I once again, this shows this this gentleman that that got apprehended in Getty Square checked all the boxes. He was black. He was resisting arrest. He, he had ran a over a mile with a right, without right. loading weapon. Another mile, a block. Right, right. He yeah. resisted. He had a weapon. He shot the weapon. He checked all the boxes of all the excuses that they have given for killing all the unarmed black people. He he checked all the boxes. And they apprehended him safely, got the weapon, took him in jail, and he will live to see his day in court. So it is possible and they didn't beat his ass. And they did not beat his ass. They well, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know what happened. We don't know what happened in the, in the uh, jail. No, no, seriously. We don't know what happened. On, they, did all, they did it all right. They did it all right. I, I got you, but we don't know what happened in the jail. So I'm not willing to sign that part off. But but it shows though all the unarmed with the, the with the Black Lives Matter, the movement, all the people that happened for the black and brown lives that have been unarmed, that have been killed by the police for resisting arrest, for for whatever, it shows that. They can that use that possible. video and show all the other municipalities. Right. This it is how it's done. Not yet. The I, country. I, I haven't seen the video. I'm not commenting on the video. I'm just, they they, they got them alive. 
I'm not yeah. copying the video until I see the video. Yeah. yeah. So when I'm you like, do, that. you're gonna be like, wow, it was like it was a movie. That so I just awesome. want I just I just want to give him props because, because, because I do I do know John Morrison was kind of upset that on on uh on Rue Ross's show, um Keith Olfson, and I want I would love him to explain it uh, on that's why they need to use the knee to the back. Um, so I didn't see the video, but from from oh, what, did he say that? Yeah, from what John Morrison um, called me today, and said that they were using that as a as proof that they need the tactic to put the knee to the back. Um, That's not but, what he said. Well, I'm That's just not what he said. I'm not I'm not getting it into it because I didn't see the video, so I'm not going to. I know, but you mentioned it, but that so that's not what he said. Okay, that's not what he said. What he said okay. was what the what he said was had they put in the laws like they did in New York City because of all the officers that jumped on this guy. They would have uh, half of them or all of them would have got charged. So, so Which I think no, it was uh, stupid to no, say, anyways. No, first, first of all, I, I, first of all, you don't have to put a knee to the back of anyone to subdue them if you know what you're doing. That's number one. All right, I'm I'm addressing the knee to the back. I didn't see yeah. the video. I didn't see yeah. the video. I'm I'm addressing the policy. I could take someone down without putting a knee to their back. They did full body on him. Right. So it depends on, as I said again, I didn't see the video, but um, I, I'm, I don't know. And I, I think we should, as if we're looking for police reform and we're continuing police reform, um, it is good that they did not kill anybody and nobody got killed and they apprehended the suspect. Great. But let's get away from the union and political rhetoric. Um, uh, um, but let's not use that to bolster the political rhetoric. I agree. I agree. Uh, I agree. You know, be, because um, it did not happen in this situation. Again, I didn't see the video. I'm only addressing the alleged comments and the rhetoric in support of what um, a lot of police departments in Westchester and the Chiefs Association, their position that they took against um, New York New, New York City Council. And, and, and I'll say it, the use of force, use of force reform and, and how we, we, we use force is going to change whether police officers or law enforcement officers like it or not. And, it, and, it's, and it's simple, right? Either you come to work and you do you do, you do by your policy, or you quit and go to a Republican state when those policies are not in 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 effect. So you know, I mean, I, one one thing I hate when 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 law enforcement say they're not allowing us to do our job. Who's not allowing you to do your job, and and who who tells you what your job is, right? Your job is what what your departmental policies and your procedures and your training tell you what your job is. So maybe yesterday your job is to apprehend somebody and you could put a knee to their back. But today we have a new policy right here. A policy comes out and says that you can't. So what is your job? Your job is what that policy says. Right. And management, the city, they're the ones that a they're the ones that put the that put the policies together. Again, if people do not like it, as they tell me at my job, you can always quit. And UPS you, is hiring. You UPS ain't really hiring neither these days. Right, right, right. But but, but but the whole thing is I think, you know, big ups to the officers for apprehending an armed gunman without killing him. Absolutely. And that, and that is my point. Absolutely. That solely I, is my I'm point. say that again, but right. let's not get, get it twisted and use this incident um, as political rhetoric in support of the positions that the chiefs of Westchester County and police unions in Westchester County took against New York City Council. So I, I, I want to make, I, I make that clear.
you know, so we do not, so, so we do not get everything twisted. Um, when, when, when we're having this conversation on, on police reform, you know, so, you know, like I said, big up to him. I, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful, you know, but I, I don't want the, the political, the, po the police leaders and, and union presidents to, to use that as rhetoric um, on, on what we're trying to do in, in, in changing policing in New York state and in America, you know, so that's, that's my position on it. So, so, um, the, 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 uh, the, um, 21 member committee that Spano appointed, um, and this is from, this is from Spano. He said, it's from backgrounds and experiences best reflected the concerns of opinions of how law enforcement is handled in Yonkers consisting of local community leaders, law enforcement, clergy, and elected officials. The city of Yonkers Police Reform Committee includes Gail Baxter from the Hudson River Community Association, Dr. Jim Bostick, Deppahan Community Executive Director, Daniel Cap Capanini, I hope I pronounced it right, Yonkers Police Department Deputy Chief, Reverend Kent Frank Coleman, NAACP Yonkers Chapter President, Lakeisha Cole Collins Bellamy, um, Yonkers Board of Education, Trustee Attorney, Honorable Tasha Diaz, Yonkers City Council, Third District, Autumn Edwards, Yon Yonkers Police Department Officer, um, Pauline Galvin, Yonkers Civic Associate Civ Civic Service Commission Attorney, Carmen Goldberg, Charter School of Educational Excellence, Reverend James Hassel, Kingdom. Christian Cultural Center, Charlie Knight, YC, YWCA CEO, executive producer, Doreen Lloyd, Yonkers Bureau Chief, Westchester County D DA's office, Daryl Mack, Yonkers Public School Assistant Principal, Donnell McCall, community member, Ka Ka Carlos Morin, Mayor's Associate, Mayor's Representative Chair, is the chair of the committee, Keith Olson, Police Benevolent Association President, Lucretia Ortiz, YMCA CEO President, Honorable Michael Sabatino, LGBTQIA community member, um, Vincent Tyler, Yonkers Police Department, retired detective, Lieutenant Charles Walker, Police, Yonkers Police Department, Yonkers Guardians Association President, and Cecilia Zuniga, um, um, a business owner of La Pineda. Um, up the list. Up, no youngsters. Up, no youngsters, and and some of those people don't live in don't even live in Yonkers, and the up, rest of them work for the city of Yonkers. Michael Sabatino, they say LGBT community. He's the director of constituent up services. The, up the list. Out and this is just my. Tasha's the youngest at forty. Up the list. And this is just my opinion. If you're doing a panel on police reform, I think there are too many police officers in that in the, on that committee, and not enough community members. Who and the rest work for the city, other well, than yeah, the clergy. Yeah, city employees, and and but. Specifically and, 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 you, and, and, and the, the not-for-profits, they're funding from the city. Right. It is not Where a lot Where is of, the people's involvement? The people. The people. Where is the people's involvement? Um, I mean, I mean, a lot of those, those are good people. I'm not saying nothing bad about the people, but they don't... That's, come that's, on, that's, Mayor. That's, that's what I'm saying. There's not enough involvement of the community in my in my opinion. And there you, is can't none. Have, you can't have a board for criminal justice reform made up of police officers in the police department. I, 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 that's not that's not a board for reform. Well, I say city workers. I'm not commenting on anybody since I serve on Westchester County. I'm <laughs> no, not, no. I'm not commenting. I get I, I need to make it clear, you know. Yeah. Because we're 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 on the radio show and motherfuckers are getting twisted, and then I have to come back live later this week and cut and 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 cut somebody out, right? So, um, I I can't read that right now. I'm talking. 
So, you know, I'm not making any comment because I'm on Westchester County. Um, so I just hope that there is enough evidence out here that all municipalities are able to make um, recommendations um, that is based on real reform. Hey, can I can I interrupt you real quick, David? So, so I'm purposely not reading some comments. If you are not going to come on as your name, and it's just going to say Facebook user, um, and you're going to hide behind that, I'm not going to read your comments. No, no, I think because they're probably wherever they're commenting. Um, I don't know. No, I think it's because of the app. Oh, it's because of the app. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so th with that said, so Facebook user number one uh, says, with all due respect, we need more discussion and debate on this policy. I believe that NYC law incensifies political resisting arrest and assaulting police officers. And that I, if I'm face in that I'm facing arrest, if I struggle hard enough, the officers out of fear of being charged and sued will be forced to let me go. This sounds like a police officer. No, that's not true. That's that's absolutely not true. And it sounds like a police officer. Right. Or somebody right, right. If you do your job within your within within your policies and procedures, then what are you worried about being sued for? And usually police officers are identified anyway. You got officers that cost municipalities four to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars. They still get their pension. So over a resisting arrest, come on, man, come on. Let, let's 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 stop putting fear uh, in, into the public, you know, because you you the tactics of of restraining someone um, it has has changed. And the reason why these policies are put in place because majority of, a lot of the times officers go too far. They go too far, you know. And how do you explain? Six hundred million dollars, and why in New York City, in 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 lawsuits and judgments, you know, of excessive force. So so you know, sooner or later, corrections change. There's things we could do five years ago we can't do now, you know. And and everybody has to go through through growing pains and changing pain. So 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 I, I guess now it's time it's time for police. You know, whatever parameters that they give you, do it. That's your job. Right. If the guy gets away, okay. The 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 it, a, you said excessive force is already illegal, but ain't nobody going to jail for it. Ain't nobody really people people are not really getting suspended for it. Even if it's on video. So so the second comment, and then I'm I'm not gonna read because I, I I feel no, that I, I, I want to make another point. Okay. In, in in New York City police policy, chokeholds were banned since 1994, since the, Anthony, since the Anthony Baez case. Right? Everybody right. will agree to that. Right. Everybody will agree that chokeholds were banned in NYPD policy. Right. When you look at the Eric Garner, anybody with common sense saw that was a chokehold. Did he go to jail for it? No, nope, because it wasn't against the law. He didn't go to jail, so I don't. I, so saying excessive force is illegal. He didn't go to jail, right? And it what took four or five years for him to actually lose his job while he worked overtime. Did he and lose? For there to be a chokehold bill, it was after George Floyd. Then they finally agreed to a chokehold bill. Right, but the chokehold bill doesn't really do anything anyway. Right. right. So, so because the policy, the, the, why would you create a bill, right? And there was, and and the, the the policy, your use of force policy already states the ban chokehold. So what what the hell are you creating a bill for? It's al it's already in the policy. The problem is enforcing. nobody enforcing. Nobody okay. is enforcing the policy. policies. They're not enforcing policy. So if 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 police, absolutely, absolutely. If he killed, if he violated policy that 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 ended in the death, absolutely he should have went to jail for it. Um, absolutely. For whoever, the, whoever the officer is, if you want to identify yourself and have a conversation, you can. Um, no, it because doesn't, these, it doesn't matter who it is. 
So I really don't care because I, I I make my statements. You don't public. know that it's an officer. Right. And <laughs> I don't make my statements public. Yes, I do believe. If you violate policy that leaves in the death, your ass should go to jail. Because it's about the credibility of the police officer. Y'all don't even, some cops don't even care about their own credibility. As long as they could get, as long as they could get away with some of the all the other things other cops or other law enforcement officers get away with. Sometimes you got to worry about your credibility and then you get mad because the community doesn't trust you. It's a violation mm -hmm. of policy and it, and it led to a death. So you should look what name, what name and anybody that's listening. See, I, I really get tired of this. Anybody that's listening, name what company you could work for that you could cost them 500, 600, $1 million, $2 million, $3 million because you violated policy. Name one company. Name one company out in the world. The only place you could do that is in law enforcement. And then they pay with taxpayers' dollars because you violated policies, procedures, and training. And then you want to get mad when the municipality says, oh, we only got a 1% raise for you. Because, you. because New York City costs $600 million in judgments and lawsuits then they get mad because they get a 1.5 raise. Well, maybe if you didn't cost the city $600 million, you could have got a 3% raise. Maybe you so, got a 3% raise. So, I mean, that, you can't oh, have it both ways. You can't have comment, it both ways. The comment that I wanted to address had to do with what I said about no, what, first the panel being made up of police. Oh, oh, the police had to be involved in what discussion? The, the I said it was a response to my comment that the panel was made up of too much wait, wait, law stop, enforcement stop, and not stop, the community. Stop. Hold on, hold on. Doctors and medical professionals take out insurance when they get sued. Stop with this nonsense on my on on, on my on my feed. I'm not stupid. Doctors and medical professionals take out insurance for lawsuits. So now, here we go. So why don't you have, now let's law enforcement take out insurance. See, now, now you don't open up a can of worms you ain't gonna walk back from. Doctors doctors, and medical professionals have to, have to take out an extra insurance for lawsuits. And it's not paid by the taxpayer. It's not paid, and, and most of these hospitals are private. So how is it coming from the taxpayer? Even, even electricians and people who do home improvements in your house have to have their own insurance if anything happens. And exactly. They, they have their own insurance. The, the taxpayers don't pay for it. Oh, my brother okay. does home improvement. Facebook user, don't come on this thread with the nonsense. City hospital, but no, no. See, now you're changing it. Doctors. doctors malpractice is paid from their insurance. Malpractice is called malpractice insurance. And hospitals have to get insurance. The tax that doesn't come from the taxpayer, Facebook user. When police officers and law enforcement mess up, that comes from the taxpayer. You have to get insurance in the medical field. So, now, so answering the question I was saying about. The, why I said that the panels should be made up of more of the community and the Facebook user said the police have to be involved in the discussion because they're the one making the arrest. The community has to be involved in the, in, the, in the discussion because they are the ones paying for the excessive force um, lawsuits. It comes from the taxpayers' money. So the taxpayers, the community should be involved in Absolutely. how they want, their, how they want their, their community policed. And this is what Criminal justice reform. Police officers are not going to call for reforms of police departments. So if you make up a, a police, a criminal police reform panel, and it consists of a lot of law enforcement, there will not be any real criminal justice reform. And it's the community is not involved. And the community is the one who has to pay for these lawsuits. And again, so I'm not addressing, and I stand by what I said. Lorraine said. It might, maybe that's why she left. 
It don't have to be a police officer. I believe that this is law enforcement. This is somebody pro law enforcement having this discussion, this and they right. come in and 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 and. and and they won't use their name. Damon says he thinks it's the app. I think it's purposely someone not using their name because they won't come on here with hey, their name. Look, I don't care who it is, but you ain't gonna come on this thread with with the with, with the nonsense. I'm I'm not the one. So I, I really don't I really don't care who that person is. And 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 it just shows that 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 their rhetoric is nonsense, right? Is 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 complete is it, complete nonsense. So, you know, I mean, look, we want to support officers, right? And and I think any community, you know, is not anti-law enforcement. I think they're pro-good cop and pro-good law enforcement and anti-bad cop. But but when 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 the the problem is is that there is no accountability for 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 those few. You know, and and um it's, it's, it's going to change. And at the end of the day, either you change with it or quit. Debate is a good thing, my friend, as you put it. But I debate those who put their name and they, they say it's their face behind their comments. Oh, I'm not, no, no, no. This is me talking. I'm not going to debate someone who does not have the heart to step up behind their name and leave baseless comments behind the term Facebook user. Come on here. Send me a message. And I will send you a link and put you on camera if you want to. And we can have the debate. No, you know what? Uh, let me see something. See, I can't tell which. They might be on the people before politics. So, all right. Go ahead and talk. Let me let me do something. So, so anyway, yo, this is this is for anybody who got it twisted. This is Black Westchester presents the People Before Politics show, and as it says in the beginning of the tie, in the opening, the show that's not afraid to say it. Yeah, we're going to have the uncomfortable conversations, and it's going to piss some people off, and some people don't want us to have these conversations, but we're going to have them anyway, and we're going to continue to have these conversations because they need to be had. You by not having these conversations does not make the pro the, the the problem go away. Um. Osiris um, M. Hotep said, I I always said union leaders should be held accountable for the racist policies. How can Black Lives Matter be anti-blue when they are Black, when there are Blacks who are in blue? Well, yeah, there are a lot of Black officers. Yeah. Oh. That's all I wanted to know. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's texting me. I'm not hiding my identity. It does not recognize me for some reason. Um, so these comments are from Joe Murray. That's what oh, I want to know. I want to oh, know who God. I'm addressing. That's who I want to know. I want to know who I'm addressing so I can address who I need to address. That's all I'm saying. Oh, sorry I went ham on you, Joe. <laughs> He's a friend of the and, show. And, and Joe is former law enforcement. And like I said, I knew it was law enforcement that was leaving those comments. I knew. You can tell. You me. called it. You called it, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Joe. You know better than that talking about doctors and yeah, man, you gotta get insurance, Joe. <laughs> now it's Joe, man. Come on, Joe. You already knew that. So he was so yeah, he wasn't connected through his Facebook page. He said, you're good. He said, wasn't, he was, I think he was doing it through something else. And it wasn't, it wasn't, yes, debate is always good. Um, we're, we're never going to, we never, that's what we do. We encourage debate. Um, we, we're never going to run from debate. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to debate facts though. And we're going to, we're always going to debate the facts. And most people should already know. Um, Demon knows his shit when it comes to law enforcement <laughs> and policy yeah. and procedures. No, no, I'm saying everybody listening, just for anybody else, shit up who has already seen Black White Shows on People Before Policy knows Damon knows his shit when it comes to police uh, uh, reform and, and, and policies and procedures and all that good stuff. So anyway, um, that 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 we gave our props to the Yonkers, the police department for that situation for handling it the way it should be handled and showing that. It could be handled that way. 
and I'm putting all other police departments on alert that it can be done. There's no, he checked off all the boxes. Again, he resisted. He was black. He had a weapon. He shot. He checked off all the boxes to be killed. And he was apprehended without being killed. So that's enough of that. Um, oh, wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> I guess not. Go ahead, Damon. Yo, what page are they on? What page is he on? I don't know. He said he tried to be on his. He said he was trying to do his what, text what, message. What he says it's me texting. Yeah, but I'm what, not hiding my attention. It does not recognize me for some reason. I will go. What in page my is page. watching it from? Joe, what page are you? You you watching the show or on someone on a page? That's the question. Because I think it's the people before politics page he's watching it from. So I'm trying to look in the settings because sometimes on the pages you have to put the app in the in the page. Right. I think I did that for people before politics because we had to do all of that for um I had to do that with my own page, I think, too. Yeah. Well, anyway, I I want to talk about something be, be before. Oh, yeah, we... it, it, it recognizes him on people before politics. There it goes. On the on oh, people there you there you it's go. Well, now, now, now we see that gorgeous face of yours, man. <laughs> no, but the bait is good. Um, oh, so he he did. Yeah, he said he had to go in at, under his page. So he whatever yeah. he did, he did it, and it's showing up now. Yeah, but and it's showing up in the comments now too. Right. So I'm I'm gonna you know I'm I'm not I'm gonna let um um AC Cole come on in a minute, man. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we 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 gonna we we gonna get him on in a minute. Um, I just sent the link in the group. Oh, I did uh, too. Just now. Yeah. So, um, I want to before I get off, and y'all could talk about all the Mount Vernon stuff. Um, because I really don't want to have to beat nobody up this year. Um. I am very, I am very disappointed in the outcome of Bianca Taylor. Yeah, I did one. That was the next thing I wanted to talk about. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm, 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 I'm very disappointed in how the how the lawyers have handled her. Personal lawyers have have handled the Bianca Taylor case. Um, no, I am I am not a lawyer. I am not a lawyer, but and, and he doesn't play one on TV either. Go ahead. Exactly, and but I dealt with so many families whose family members that that was killed by. Um, law enforcement and I've dealt with so many different lawyers and um, big shout out to Benita Zellman, um, one of the baddest lawyers in New York state um, in her prime, you know, she's getting older now. She's getting, you know, she's like Ali, you know, the jab is getting a little slower, you know, but, <laughs> but, but she's still a beast. Right. So I am, you know, I I think that, and this is just my opinion, and I'm going to stick by it. And some people disagree, have d disagreed with me on Facebook. Some people agree. Well, you Joe know, is an attorney. He can comment on that. Yeah, I mean, he can if he wants to. Yeah. I, I, I'm really disappointed um, in them taking the 12 million. You could take the 12 million. But six months, within six months after the death, um, to to take twelve million, um, and it, and and to take it before the grand jury, um, I think it it was a disservice to the family. The family was going to get money regardless, right? Um, usually, the tactic is. You know, first of all, for them to cry, 
for an independent special prosecutor after the grand jury is a, is a mistake. They should have been crying that from the day she, given? from the day that she was killed. They should have been requesting an independent special prosecutor from the governor. They they should have said that the that the AG and the district attorney was a conflict of interest, and we and we want the governor to appoint an independent special prosecutor. That's what the lawyer should have said. When you when you file, people say it's a, it was a wrongful death. I assumed it was a civil, but he, but but I do believe, and if I'm wrong, you know, um, Joe Joe Murray's listening. Even in even in a wrongful death suit, there there is a there is there is a time in the lawsuit that you you have to take depositions. There's you know, and then and 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 then. Um, and then um, you could request evidence. Now that you settled for an unprecedented amount of money, twelve million dollars is, is is a lot of money, right? I'm not more, saying, than, more than most cases, right? Exactly, more than, more, more than most cases. I'm not saying the family doesn't deserve it. I'm just saying the timing of the settlement is it, it's, it's kind of crazy, because now how now how do you find the truth, right? You you can't depose the police officers, right? You can't re re request to see evidence, right? You, you can't do none of the stuff that you could do in the process of, of suing and, and, and suing them and suing the officers personally and, and suing everybody. So all the things that was available to you in, in the process of the lawsuit, now you can't do because you settled. So Did you I, see what came out today? Uh -huh. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I did see. Did it, you hear what came out today, hey, Damon? No. All right, um, somebody leaked about forty-five different camera tapes from the Breonna Taylor investigation, and they found out that the integrity of the case was compromised because they said there were seven officers that were in there that shot. One of the, they said it was no body cameras. Clearly, one of them had one on his shoulder. They even showed a picture of it. Um, the one guy that got shot in the leg, two of the officers that shot were not supposed to leave the scene. They were supposed to stay there, but they were supposed to be separated. They didn't separate the other guys. They let them mingle in, go in and out. Two of the guys ended up going to the hospital to talk to the guy that got shot in the leg, and then they returned. One of the cops said, when they asked him who shot first, he said Taylor did. When they questioned him, he said, I was afraid I was going to lose my job. That's why I lied. Okay, okay, great. Okay, great. But now what there's a do? lot, a lot, right. a lot of evidence what, what, in those cases. Now, now what do you do with that evidence after the grand jury? Who do you go to? Who do you go to? Do you Can go you try? Do you go to bar? No. Guess where you gotta go? You gotta go, bar, the US attorney. You gotta go to the US attorney. And guess what's gonna happen with that? <laughs> That, yeah, that, see, and and that's the thing, you know. I mean, and, and and that's the thing. Well, thank God if someone leaked it out, right? Thank God for that. Well, yeah. if, if, if that wasn't leaked, they would have never got it. Yeah, yeah. The person is scared. He, he uh, of course, he's anonymous. Right. They would. They would have never. They would have never got it if it, if it wasn't if it wasn't leaked. I you know, think it at least from the attorney general's office. I think somebody well, from the I mean, attorney general's office. At the end of the day, now now it's a, it's a complete quagmire, right? And and then they they they're gonna have to, um, they 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 they're gonna um, they they're gonna have to try to fix it. I mean, I, you know, I just think it was a mess. You know, I, 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 from my from my personal experience in dealing with lawyers and and, and how they do, you know, I, I really um, I, I think it was a mess. You know, so 
I don't know, man. I I just I'm 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 just tired of these lawyers that go for the fast money and not justice. You know, and then you and then you start crying for an independent special prosecutor after. Should have did that in the first place. The family wouldn't be going through all this pain. You know, they're, they're you know, I I I really think is is we have to part of the problem in seeking justice is sometimes these money hungry lawyers, you know, these pro these protest profiteers, you know, that that and 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 I told somebody on Facebook, look, I've 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 I dealt with a lot of families. And and let's not and let's not think that a lot of these people that are cameras at a lot of these rallies are not being paid to do that. Let's not not get it twisted. Do not get it twisted. Because and then there's some families that won't pay for none of that to happen, and that's why you don't see those same people that you see in all of the, up here marching for Kenneth Chamberlain Jr. Right. So, you know, because some people just are not paying to do that. So, you know, this is a big business. There's, you know, there's, it's, 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 it's a big business behind a lot of this stuff. And um, we have to we, we have to recognize that. And and unfortunately, the conversation is, a, is, is happening around this beyond a Taylor case on on, on the business. Um, of 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 um, marching and rallying, you know, and police brutality. Um, Joseph, oh, you? okay, you got it. Go ahead. Yeah, you make a great point about the civil matter, but the code of professional conduct requires a duty of loyalty to the client, and all, all and all offers must be conveyed to the client. Decision to accept offers is solely the decision of the client, with the advice of the attorney. Absolutely, I I, I do agree. You know, I, I I do agree, but 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 Joe, I also believe that um, should what should be clear because I because you know I, I I think something like that didn't happen because how 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 would the mother accept a settlement and then and and then talk about justice for for a daughter and and finding the truth and then asking for a special prosecutor. You 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 accept the settlement. I, I told everybody, I got on Facebook and told everybody, once they accept that settlement, I said, ain't nobody gonna get charged. They settled already. It's no obligation for them to do anything else but pay, but cut the check. It's no obligation but to cut the check and keep it moving. You know, and, and, and I think it's sad, man. I I I I really think it's sad. And 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 I hope that they that they did explain this to, to the family of Bianca Taylor. You know that you know this is this is how it's going to go down. You know, uh, you know. Do you do you want money or do you want to know the truth about the uh, uh, about the death of your of your child? You know, so I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm 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 kind of torn with that, and and um, you know, I really have a I have a problem. You know, I I have a problem with that. And Joe, you make a great point, but but we don't know the conversation that was had. And and there were some big time lawyers. I gotta go through my Twitter. That was caught on Twitter, you know, talking about it's about the money, it's about making them pay, it's about the money. And some of them are just all about the money, man. And that's and, and it's sad. You know, you know, maybe you wouldn't have got 12 million, maybe you would have got seven million, but you, you would have got the truth. So, you know um, before you go, Damon, I just wonder we were talking about these um these police reform panels. I don't know if you saw the latest article I just posted. Black leaders seek role in in Austin response to police reform mandate. They're complaining the same thing. Um, um, one of the pastors, Sean John Jones of Star Bethlehem, Bethlehem um, Baptist Church, one of those who signed the letter, emphasized the importance of the community involvement in the process. The, the, he said the Yonkers police interact with dozens of ethnic and cultural communities. Communities of color and the, and the Austin Police Department already have a strained relationship. The village, the village can begin to bridge the divide, listening to the expressed needs and feelings of the Black and Hispanic community that believe a true reform process may be very different 
may be the very difference between life and death of their sons and daughters after interactions with the police. Without the trust of the community, no reform process can um, be effective. Uh, another Bishop, Joan uh, Whitaker said, um, I hope the village will do, do the hard work necessary to engage the people who have the greatest stake in the police uh, force um, that, that effective and respectful of the community is sworn to protect. They um, again formed a committee or forming a committee without the community involvement and 21, um, 20, 23 community leaders of Austin that have petitioned the village board of trustees and they are seeking a seat at the table in, a, in, in the process. Good for that. Governor Cuomo's executive uh, order 203, the New York State reform of police renovation, uh, re, re invention collaborative. And the 23 members include some of the people, actually some of our followers and listeners of the show. Um, um, you had the Osnin NAACP members, um, chairman of the Osnin Sankofa homecoming, uh, Joyce Cole, who uh, we wrote a story, she became the first black. Hello. Um, the first black um, Osnin um, historian. Um, Omar J. Herrera, who uh, both uh, uh, Lorraine and I interviewed. Uh, former, to be all 26. No, nah, former village oh. trustee. <laughs> I'm just the people that we, the people that I know that have been friends of the show, though. Um, and and Kemi Poe, who's the director of the Community Act Action Program. Um, so, so several of the people that listen to the show and support Black Westchester were in on that letter. So, um, I think Lorraine is having problems. She goes back yeah. and forth, she's having problems with her with her um, thing. So I just wanted to put that out there. That story is on blackwestchester.com right now. Is the current story up. You can read more about that. Check that out. But it makes my point that they need more community involvement in these boards that they're putting together in each of these municipalities when it deals with criminal justice reform. It can't be full of police, office, law enforcement, and city workers. You need the, 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 the ethnic groups of the community the, 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 the stakeholders, the community activists, the ones that are going to fight for true reform need to be involved in the uh, in the process. So, uh, you know, I, I just I, read that I, because that's a, another municipality that is, is complaining about the same thing. So, you know, um, and, and Yanko, is, um, I failed to mention uh, Shanae, Shanae Williams, Councilwoman Shanae Williams. She put out something too, a statement. She, she, she's not very happy. With, with the status of of the of the board that they have now, but also there's going to be two community forums that they're going to have. So if people have something to say, they need to show up. Yeah, I think one is Wednesday. But I was quick. Yeah, John Morrison is going to something. I don't know what he's going to. Um, okay. But and that dark, that, that dark spot in the lower corner, Dr. Bob, Dr. Bob in his car. Coming back. <laughs> oh, we lost him. He'll be back. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I mean, look. See, this is this is this is the crazy shit that I'm talking about. Oh, excuse my French. This is this is the crazy stuff that I'm talking about, man. Like it's it's just more it's just gonna be more confusion, right? And 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 the people which the people should have the people should have a role. Um, the the people should have a role in um. And, and, yeah, Joe said his professor, right? <laughs> Bob, you got to connect your mic and Cam. Yeah, before we get edge to the street, yeah. he's about to say the same thing. So, yeah. so I mean, this is this is I mean, this is this is the game. This is the political shuffle that we're gonna have to deal with. Um, um huh. a lady said that wasn't French LOL, <laughs> but she said the people must have a role. <laughs> yes, the people gotta have a role. And, and 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 I hope that people in all these different municipalities, you know, go to these meetings and 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 and, and voice and voice their concern. You know, um, like I said, I, I really don't make I'm not really making too much comment about any municipalities. Uh police reform, you know, because I'm on Westchester County, 
But the only thing I can say is we're gonna make sure our shit is our uh, our joint is popping, right? With a whole bunch of Callum Bitterly, right? And 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 we're also looking at um mental health of, of, of officers. I think you know that's something that is missed is the mental health of the officer. Cause of because a lot of these incidents. Yes. Yes. Um, the mental health of the officer is overlooked, right? You know, and um, we have to, if, if we're going to have officers out there that are empowered to use um, deadly physical force and deadly force, right? We have to make sure that they, that they, their faculties, their brain waves is, is acting properly. You know, and does and, that include does that include addiction? Yes, yes, mental health, addiction. You know, I mean, look, addiction is basically, you know, I mean, we 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 have um, no tolerance drug policy. If you're caught, you're fired. It ain't even it, it, it's not even a uh, it's it's not even a it, you know it ain't even a conversation. You take a piss test, you found dirty, you fired. Right, it's 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 not a conversation. But they do have a place. Wow. If you go to them, if you go to them, they will no, say that's, all that's over. That's <laughs> over. And y'all think they're saying? And y'all think they're saying? Yeah, 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 that's 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 over. You know. Oh, okay. As far as I know, I mean, I'm not. They used to do that. They used to do that like two or three times. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you know what? We we had. Let me tell you something, man. We had one of the we we had one of the baddest drug policies ever at one time, right? So, if you bad meaning bad or bad meaning good, no meaning. You know, I, I I still don't understand how we gave that away and didn't did anything for it. We got nothing for it. Usually, negotiations is a give and take, right? That one, are you gave it away? We and we and 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 the rumor is, yeah, um, county police had the same one. They gave they they gave it up and they got a week's vacation for it. We ain't get nothing. So anyway, the same lawyer, right? No. Oh no. If if we um if you got caught, right? This is how crazy the drug policy is. If you got caught, they'll send you to a funny farm, right? You come back, <laughs> you come back, and you can't and supposedly you know you stay drug free, right? But if you got caught after 18 months. The process starts all over again, so you can have a relapse eight, every eighteen months for the rest of your goddamn career. So the same with the NYPD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 we gave it up for no tolerance, and and we didn't get anything. Um, hey, Crystal, and we didn't get anything for it. I mean, um, I don't know what's the NYPD now, but ours is no tolerance. If they if if if, if they if they bop you. You know, it's a wrap. It's it's it's, it's, it's definitely a wrap. You know, so yeah. But but I'm talking about mental health because I, I think you know when when, when you're dealing with um, police officers, you're dealing with detectives. You know, they they see things that you know the normal people don't see. You know how how does it how does it affect um, you know female detectives when they go and they see a baby frozen in the refrigerator. Or a baby with their neck slashed and head bashed in, you know, and all those different things. Like when 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 you see the most gruesome states of human beings on, you know, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, how does that affect you, right? Like soldiers in war, right? Exactly. Yeah, I, I had a friend. I had a friend that uh, a cop in Yonkers. He was assigned to the sexual assault division in the district attorney's office. And he had to re he had to resign. He had to go back to being a cop in Yonkers because he told me he couldn't do it. There were too many children yeah. that that were dead in sexual and 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 it, and it fucked with his head. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so so I mean, you know, dealing with the mental health of officers, I think is important. You know, yeah. I think it's very important. You know, and and I could tell. You know, I'm not the same person I was. 30 years ago when I walked through those doors, definitely different, you know, because, because your, your, your environment changes you, you know, and, and if, and if anybody says that your environment does not change you, 
you know, they're, they're, they're lying, right? Um, I, I think I've worked hard not to be as aggressive, you know, uh, as, um, as many people are, right? Um, or that jail mentality, right? So you are, you work hard not to, you know, not to bring that, you know, outside of the jail wall. And you got a good support system behind you too. So, you know, yeah, your, your, your mom and, you know, when she was here and other people, you know, had your back to, to give you a break from that. Like, you know, well, you have to have a life, man. Like, like, oh, like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I went to training day, right? Since you know, I've been on midnights, and I don't go. I, I, I work in a penitentiary. I don't go in the jail a lot. Um, I, I, so I have no reason to go over there, right? Um, so I went to training over in the jail, and uh, there's this female officer, this black female officer. Never, I never seen her before. She never seen me before, right? So. We're standing at the elevator. She's looking at me. You know, she's like, oh, never seen you before. Okay. Right. She says, um, you got to work midnights. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I work midnights. You know, she says, oh, and, and this, this always come right. The next, the next, how long you been working? 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you look so young. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, right? So the secret is don't get caught up in this bullshit at work, right? If you want to look young, leave this shit at work. Yeah, when you walk out the door, leave it out exactly. that door. Because walk out the door, whatever. Bring it home and, and, and you bring all this stuff home, right? You'll get divorced. And you know, you 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 can't bring this stuff home. You end up drinking and becoming an alcoholic, you know. And when you heard what happened to my brother Hector, right? What? When they when they killed my little brother and they arrested the murderer, he was doing a bad check and he came to face to face the same night with the guy that killed my brother. Yeah, he was in he was down in J Dorm. I remember that. Yeah. I, I remember they had to they they had to take him off the block because he was yeah. down there. Yeah, I remember all that. I remember that. You know, I I remember when that happened. Um, um, thank you, thank you, cousin. Who's the guy she got in that picture? No, no. Who's in your picture, cousin? Because <laughs> he's beat up. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> who's, in the, who's that in your picture? Cousin? Yeah, I'd be a civil rights dude or something because it's black and white and he's beat up. He, he, he took one for the team. Who, 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 what was in that picture, man? God bless him. I, I did want to say, Damon, wait, and I respect that you said that you didn't want to say nothing about the um, individual boards because you are on one, but there's a difference between you and a lot of people in law enforcement because you have gone out and you have said it. You you fought for the other side. You fought for the community. You fought a lot of a lot of officers are not doing that. So it, it's hard to to put you in the same category with a lot of officers, because you know a lot of officers complain you make their job hard by by the, by the things you say. So you know you speak up for for the community. You're there. You're there when. Uh, individual is shot by the police, you're with the family, but you're also there when an officer is being retaliated against or, or treated unfairly, you're with the officer. So, like, a, a, you can't say that about anybody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Hey, so that, that's just my, about, that's hey, my wait, observation. That's my observation of being your partner. Teeth in in or he's, is, is a teeth logging in or he's making comments? Which one is he doing? I, I don't know because he said <laughs> we both sent him a link, so I don't know. Dr. Bob, can you, uh, is your mic on? You want to say something? I know we can't see you because you're in the car. Can you, can you all hear me? Absolutely, hear me? sir. Yes, we can. Okay, hey, Dr. Bob. Yes. Lorraine, what's up, baby? How are you tonight? Good to hear your voice. Hey. D, what's up, D? Yo. Notice, yo, Lorraine, up? you notice how I went from, you know, to drop the couple of hours when I said what's up to D? Yo, D, what up, kid? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, good, y'all. I'm good. Obviously, Damon, that's my uncle Jimmy McDonald, who was a freedom rider. He was on the bus. Oh, that's dope. 
Thanks hold for the on, post. Hold on. You, so you gonna send me that picture? Uh, Alita, you gonna send me that picture? Hold on, AJ. Yes. You and I have had this discussion recently about Jimmy McDonald being my uncle. It's a coincidence. Um, oh, oh, okay. Alayda, you need to tell me how we're related. Alayda, you need to tell me. Well, it's, she's my cousin. That's her uncle. Two weeks ago. Right. She's my cousin. Okay. It's her uncle. I'm assuming it's my okay. uncle, too. So, Alayda, you got to tell me offline how you are related to Jimmy McDonald and if, that, if I'm actually related, too. So, we can have this conversation, then I'll follow up with you, Bob. Oh, you're Dr. Bob a cousin. <laughs> our dads used to work. Oh, yo, Damon, our dads used to work together at General Motors. Who, Dr. Bob? And my dad, yeah. And then, oh, and then when they closed Tarrytown, they both went to the same plant in Georgia. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, we found that out one day when we saw my Jeff Red working with my dad. He said, "My dad used to work with Jeff Red too." <laughs> this is like. Yo. That's dope. That's dope. My dad used to tell Jeff Red, yo, I hope that music stuff work out, boy, because you sleeping on the job. You ain't gonna have this job much longer. <laughs> he used to tell him that. Oh, tell tell Jeff that? Yeah, yeah. When he was first getting started in music, you know, he worked for General Motors. And my dad was one of the older cats that took him under his wing. The Jeff tells that story. Oh. My dad oh, said, yeah. yeah, he used to always tell him, hey boy, you might wanna uh um uh, you might wanna um you know, take the job more serious just in case that music stuff don't work out. <laughs> you know how the <laughs> older generation is. Yeah, sleeping on the job, coming in late, and doing yeah, it. Sleep, sleeping on the job. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yo, boy, you better you better hope that music come out. You might not have no job here at General Motors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we lost. So Bob, Bob's not on camp. Oh, there he goes. Okay, we lost the rain. So, so my apologies. So, so, they, so, so, Bob, my cousin Alayda said Jimmy McDonald is her mother's brother. Her maiden name is McDonald. So, I might not be officially like she's my cousin. I'm assuming he's my uncle. So, or he's my cousin too. So, somewhere down the line. And I think Alayda's related, related to me on my mother's side. Is that correct? So, something like that. Lorraine is back. Yeah, what is the team doing? He don't know how to click on a link. I don't know, dude. I don't know. The team is <laughs> click on the link that's in your text, man. Yeah, I said to send it to him. I said to him too. Um, so Bob, my my cousin Alayda says she would love to sit down. Uh, Bob, my cousin Alayda says she would love to sit down with you, Doctor Bob, about Jimmy McDonald. Can you hear me, Bob? I don't know if Bob can hear me. Or his mic's not on or something. I'll set that up later, though. I'll definitely set that up. The three of us will get together one day. How about that? So, yeah. So, we might have a cousin who was a freedom fighter. Freedom rider. That's interesting. You never know. Let me see. Um... Glad you are focusing on mental health. It what it has been a pandemic before the pandemic. I am doing I am doing focus oriented mental health forums. Shout oh, out to yeah. Cicely Greaves. Yeah. That's great. Cicely, you gotta reach out to Lorraine. We gotta get you on the show and talk about mental health. Yes, yes, yes. I think um I, I think even outside of law enforcement, I think we have to talk about um just the trauma of being black, right? There's there's a there's a there, there's a mental health aspect of just waking up black every morning, right? And, and 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 I think that's something, you know, that we do not talk about. And it's an extra extra trauma, um, being black law enforcement. Like, how do you, like, you know, a lot a lot of people say, you know, black officers don't care, right? But there is trauma when 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 you have um when 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 you have black law enforcement um dealing with um issues in the black community and and dealing with racist cops and you have to work with them it's a lot of trauma like people don't like i i i don't think people talk about that you know and um um 
people need to talk about that. We don't talk about that enough. The, the trauma of, of black officers, you know, um, racism can make racism can make you go insane. Oh, that's absolutely. what Facebook users said. Um, real quick before we bring our next guest in, Bob have dropped off. So Bob, Jimmy McDonald is my cousin's. She said it's her mother's brother. Her her maiden name is McDonald, and she would love to sit down with you. And me and my cousin are related on my father's side. So I'm going to set it up for the three of us to get together and we can have that conversation offline. Yeah. Wonderful. That's what's up. All right. Yeah. All right. Lorraine, Lorraine, <laughs> make, make, make sure you reach out to Sister Graves, Graves so we can have her on the show and we could, and we could talk about that. So, Damon, um, I know we have oh, a teeth coming oh, in. Are you leaving? Yeah. Yes, oh, Damon. That's my sister, of course. Yeah, make any, sure you reach out so we can schedule that. Yes. Any last oh, words yes. that you want to address? Okay. Um, no, no. <laughs> I said what I had to say, man. Uh, <laughs> I said what I had to say. Yo, um, big. Listen, I'm. I, I gotta say it. You know, sometimes I'm supposed to be. You know, a lot of times I, I'm. I'm supposed to be quiet, but I can't sometimes, right? So, big shout out to Joe Murray. Big shout out. Um, for for representing Officer Bovell. Um, I, 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 um exactly. Imagine what Bovell is going through. A, 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 exactly. You know, and and you know, I, I know firsthand watching what my wife went through. And and I wish I'd have known Joe um when we were going through all uh, when we were going through all that uh with my wife. Um I think she got a lot of better representation. I'm going to leave that right there. So, but, um, um, you know, big shout out to Joe for, for standing up for Beauval and, and, and breaking down the legal aspects. And so, so the community, the Mount Vernon community, the Westchester community, the police reform community um, can be clear on what happens to an officer um, when they do break through the blue wall and, and how they're treated by the, by the system and, and the institution. Um, but like I said today to the Eth Ethical Cultural Society of Westchester, um, we all should be behind Officer Bovell. It shouldn't, Absolutely. it shouldn't be, you know, it, it should be a crowd of people supporting this brother um, and, and, calling, um, and, and, and calling City Hall, calling the county, calling the state, and asking them what the hell are they doing about this this nonsense, and why aren't they protecting um, o o Officer Bovell? So, you know, I, I, that's that, that's all I got to say. Before before you leave, and I just want to introduce our next uh, um, Atif. So so this young man, um, we first started Black Westchester. I guess he kind of lived in the same building that Damon was living. So what we was doing and wanted to get more involved and became a part of Black Westchester when we first got started. You know what I'm saying? Started getting his own feel for what he wanted to do. And then he went off and started his own thing, the Mount Vernon News Center. And, um, you know, he gets a lot of criticism. Um, and, and this is what I say a lot about that. Like when we first started, yo, know, I really didn't know what I know now. You know, I really didn't know everybody that I don't know. That a lot of stuff that y'all said about Atif, y'all said about me um, in 2014. You know what I'm saying? When the, when the Davis administration was in office, was, you know, we was we were reckless. We weren't going to be here. We didn't know what we was talking about. We were fake news and all that stuff. But the passion was there. And, you know, I learned and I learned and I, and I took it to another level. And you know what I'm saying? I see that in this young man who's going to be the future of whatever this is. Because me and Damon ain't going to be doing this to like George, George like um, John Lewis to the day we die. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we will, but, but still, at some, point, at some point, though, we're not going to be here. And it's going to be young cats like this young man who is going to grow and, and be the future of this. And he's going to find his own way and he's doing it his own way. And, you know, I don't, me and him don't agree on everything. You know what I'm saying? We got our own way of doing things. That's why we got our own things. You know what I'm saying? But I applaud him and the passion that he has. And I have seen him come a long way from the day he started and he first approached me. And I will say that. And I will always stand when he needs me behind him and, and offer anything. I can give him suggestions or whatever to make him better. Um, so I, with that, I would like to introduce um, Atif Khalil um, to the show. <laughs>
And um, I just want to say that we're waiting on just in case Damon wanted to say anything before he went out. Keep doing your thing. Keep reporting, man. And and keep holding people's feet to the fire, man. That's what Absolutely. it's like. And, and Lorraine wanted everybody to know she's having so much problems on the Wi-Fi. She just said goodnight to all of us. She's not trying to get back on. Her Wi-Fi just kept acting up. So she's not on. And um, yes, that was Damon K. Jones. Um, he's out He's out of here right now. Um, probably like m- most of the shows we do, we got to go to work tonight. So you know what I'm saying? So he came in for a minute and said what he had to say. But we bring him to the show a chief. Who's on one part of the uh, save, but also part of Save Mount Vernon, who has right. been holding a lot of rallies and been fighting for the rights of the uh, the um, family victim, family members of unsolved homicides in Mount Vernon. He's him and Jesse Van Lu, who was just at the press conference and spoke the other day. Um, um, you know, have been fighting um, tirelessly for. Yeah. You know, uh, the unsolved homicides for them to be solved and for the families to get answers. So, what's up, young man? AJ, good to see you. Thank you for having me on. Dr. Bob, how are you, sir? I hope all is well. Hey, how with are you guys? Good evening, my brother. Nice to I hear your Bob voice, is, Lemmy. Bob, it's, it's always good to hear your voice. You know, it always speaks volumes, energy, positive energy. So, it's always good to hear from you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, AJ, thank you so much for the love. And, 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 and like I've always told people, Black Westchester is pretty much where I started, you know, reporting about Mount Vernon. And that was during the uh, Richard Thomas administration. So um, AJ was very receptive to my ideas and critical thinking about what we should do and the style of reporting. So he brought me on and I learned a lot and I'm still learning as we go on. And it takes experience. It takes you to go through it to learn from it. And um, that's what we're doing. But as you know, in Mount Vernon, it's a challenging experience to get the truth. Very challenging yeah, experience. As Very me and Todd Milburn used to always say, you have to peel, it's like an onion, you have to peel several layers just to get near the truth. Not to the truth, near the truth. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And you got to talk to like 19, pe- 19 people to get close to the truth. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? right. Yeah. So, so, um, so with that in mind, you know, it makes it a little bit challenging to make sure you get accurate reporting. But, um, you know, I've been working with George over at Gothamist, you know, who has been doing an excellent job and getting the Bovell tapes out and, and, and really reporting on that. And I've been kind of amplifying his, his, his reports. But uh, for the most part, there's a lot going on in Mount Vernon. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Joe Murray said, thank you all, guys all for your help. We're in this together. Um, Joe Murray represents Officer Bovell, who was the whistleblower cop for people that don't know. Um, we just had a press conference the other day. It's on blackwestchester.com. If you go, it's on the front page. You click on it and you will see it. Um, you can see the only place you can see the entire um, press conference in, in its entirety because everybody else will show you bits and pieces. Right. You can see it from beginning to end on Black Westchester, and um, Joe just sent letters to they they Joe and and they also went through um they went through um they went to Scarpino's office to hand him a letter to try to get him to recuse himself from the case. Um, really? I don't think he met with them. And before I forget, while I do have Joe listening and Bob on the air, Joe just put up Bob. Doctor Bob taught me everything I know about statistics at Queens College. Oh no, then Joe might have <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I wanna I wanna give a shout out to Joe because it was a pleasant surprise to learn that him and I have a shared history um at Queens College where I served as an instructor. Um hopefully Joe might be being nice because um statistics was one of the courses that I was you know, had a lot of learning to do. Um, a couple of students um, told me about statistics. This is a concept. So I don't know. Joe might not have been in that class. But in any event, good to hear you, Joe. And good to see that you're doing good things um, since, you know, leaving Queen College. So, so Atif, what, what have yeah. you, do you have anything new about the, um, like I said, he just handed the, um, a letter, tried to hand a letter to Scarpino the other day. Scarpino didn't accept it. They also wrote another letter 
to the um, um, ju administrative judge Kathy Davidson asking them to remove Scarpino from the test from the case and 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 get a, a, a independent um, 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 investigator on the case. Um, I don't know what's come of that so far. Um, um, that's been the last uh, update I know. Do you have anything new that you know or anything that you can add to the? I don't, uh, but I want to just oh. give good kudos to Joe and his team for for <laughs> taking the courage to go into Scarpino's office and dropping off that letter. Scarpino's got to go. He's in the way. He's causing a lot of backup, traffic backup with a lot of cases because he's not solving them. He's not uh, prosecuting them. So uh, he's just another uh, individual that's in the way. And I'm glad that Murray and his team built up enough courage to go directly to his office. Which we have the press conference right outside his office. Right outside his office, which is, yeah. which is so similar to what I want to do in a certain different thing, but we'll talk about that later. And Jesse Van Lu <laughs> knows what I'm talking about. Right, but right. I wanna, he, he did exactly what I would do. And um, I got to give it to him. Thank you for doing that because, um, you know, it's been long. It's been long to wait. I mean, how long we have to wait? And, you know, there are other cases, you know, in Mount Vernon that are waiting, that should be prosecuted, that haven't. Yeah. Um, he said, they said he wasn't in. I guess he's not an early riser. <laughs> um, well, yeah, because it was like one thirty or something. If that's too early to catch him. But you know what, though? So so this is all thing I have to say about Scarpino. And, and if he didn't do what he was going to do for three and a half years while he was holding the position, I'm not expecting him to do anything now in his lame duck session because he lost the primary. So he's going in December 31st. This is a, this right. is like the, what they call the lame duck session. Of his of his candidate of his uh a term, so if he didn't do it when he was active and when he was running for re-election, I what is he gonna do now that he lost the election? What's he gonna do? And 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 I do agree. Joe Murray said at the press conference, Bovell's life is in danger. Um, you know we saw that we saw that movie about the white cop in in, in the in, in, in NYPD um years ago played by Al Pacino um Serpico. You know what I'm saying? Where they let him go in the door first and had, and had him almost killed. Right. Damon and I met got to meet um, Serpico about four years ago um, at a protest. He came down for um, support uh, officers for Kaepernick. But um, it was great talking to him. And he still got, he still has death threats on his life now. And he still can't come into the five boroughs. They had to escort him in and out of the five boroughs. He can't come in the five boroughs. He still has death threats. And that's a white cop. That's a white cop in NYPD. So what you think they're going to do to a black cop? You know, I, I've heard rumors. I'm not sure if it's fully true. I've heard that he's called for backup and it took him a long time to show up. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so, so we can't wait till January. Mimi Roker might be the, 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 um, the new person, but she don't step foot till January. It's, it's, it's still September going on October. A lot can happen between now and January. To this young man, and I and I want to say one thing. I don't want I want to monopolize the conversation, but all and, and this is for all your Black Lives Matter cats, all your activists out there in the street. The one complaint I heard from everybody is that good cops don't speak up against the bad cops. And now you got one good cop who spoke up. Where the hell are y'all at? Exactly. Like, you do need support behind him. He needs support. The community should be standing behind him. All your Black Lives Matter people who talk about police corruption and criminal justice reform and why good cops don't speak up, y'all need to be behind this cat. Right. You know what I'm saying? Why, where where y'all support? Where were y'all at the press conference? I, I sent y'all a press release. I sent it out to y'all. I personally sent it to y'all. Where was y'all at for, the, for all of this? And y'all always talking about cops this and cops that. Yo, one cop took his life in his own hands, and he he, he told he he, he he reported the corruption. He reported the situation. Y'all leaving him hanging out there now. And this is this is what I gotta say. And this is from me. If anything happens to this man before the new DA comes in, it's on all y'all out there, the Black Lives Matter, all y'all out there, and it's on all the elected officials who are over Mount Vernon, who have not said that neither. It's on all of your hands if anything happens to this man. I got a question, AJ, that I want to ask uh, 
the lawyer Murray. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's tuned in. He, he, can he, can he can he just detail or tell us how life is like for Bovell inside Mount Vernon Police Department? Because I'm I know that he's still working as a cop. So how is it like for him uh, now that these tapes are coming out? Uh, Joe, I just sent you the link if you want to pop in for like five, ten minutes. I just sent you the link if you want to pop in for five, ten minutes and answer I get that a question. question. A lot. I get that yeah. question a lot. So, so you can answer the question in, in person and you can, you know, ride out with us these last 20 minutes if, if you want to. Um, I just text you the, the link yeah. to, uh, to come in. Yeah, so, so hopefully he's signing in soon. I sent it to him. Um, and that'd be good to hear, you know. Hey, Jay. Um, yes, Bob. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. I did want to note that there are action that, actions that other government agencies besides the district attorney's office can take. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm somewhat puzzled, I'm perplexed why we haven't given the gravity of the allegations that Officer Bobel has made. Right. Why the, the committee on the city council that has oversight of the public safety committee has not launched an independent investigation in order to ascertain the um, validity of, of um, Officer Bobel's claims. This is not merely a matter that is to be um, reviewed by a district attorney to see whether or not there have been crimes committed. One of the roles of any legislator is to constantly monitor the performance of the various agencies in this government to make sure that they're adhering to policy and then when they don't, to revisit the um, laws to see if there are any changes that need to be made. Since no, I am not, say, me, go ahead, Bob. I was just going to say, since I'm not fully familiar with all the um, details of Officer Bovell's allegations, I'm hesitant to say. But there would be nothing more powerful that the city council could do to send a clear signal to the Mount Vernon Police Department that corruption is being closely monitored and to, and to launch a full scale hearing to precisely what occurred. Absolutely. And I did want to answer one part that you said about other agencies. So mm -hmm. the FBI and all those higher agencies, once the DA says he's investigating, they won't. They're not going to, they're going to let right. the DA handle it. So when the FBI, when they contacted John Pino's office, his office said they were, they were investigating when, um, Stop spreading false information, dude. Uh, Daniel Terry, we'll have a conversation on another note. Oh, you talking about he's talking to a teeth? Hasn't changed. Okay, we met, we'll deal with that off. So anyway, um, <laughs> the FBI has contacted the FBI has contacted Scarpino's office to look into it, and Scarpino's office said he was investigating. So the FBI is not going to step on their toes. And I believe, and Joe can speak on it when he comes. He said he's on his way in. Um, the the Southern District reached out to him for the tape. So now I guess if they got the tapes, and if they contacted the district attorney, and the district attorney, because he's he released a statement after the press conference that they are actively investigating. So as long as they claim they're actively investigating, no higher authority is going to step on their toes. So, right. so I don't know if that Understood. answers that part of the question. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it is it is a response. I don't know that there's right. anything. There is no legal requirement mm -hmm. that any agency right. seed. And I, I think our previous experience in the city of Mount Vernon is that the district attorney's office has been too slow footed to respond to credible allegations of criminal wrongdoing. Um, as we saw in the case of Mayor Thomas, where eventually the mayor was convicted of a number of, found guilty, pled guilty to a number of um, criminal misdeeds. 
And yet, um, it was only by the tremendous force of the public that <clears throat> that um, charges were eventually brought. So what Hello? I'm saying is that you're right, AJ. I'm going to try to actually hopefully let you guys see me since I put my... Yeah, we see, we see you, man. Yeah. So I was going to say you're right that I think other agencies need to be cautious to make sure that they don't step on the district attorney's toes. But... I think your first crack. The district so, attorney so. under Scarpino under Scarpino has given a lot of indications that it's operating in bad faith, and I do not think that any city council member who belongs to committees that have jurisdiction over this matter should um, continue to table an investigation waiting for us. The Westchester County. I have District. another question that I brought up to Damon before, and passing we were having a conversation about. In a lot of cor in the corporate world, and a lot of other thing, a lot of other places, there is a whistleblower, um, yeah. you know, safeguards for whistleblowers. That any attack on any whistleblower will be, you know, is criminal. Um, I I guess we don't have that in place in the city of Mount Vernon, or as far as law enforcement or whatever, because um, I don't I don't I don't. There's no repercussion or anything for any of the retaliation that has ever taken place in in in, in um in Mount Vernon. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so the, the question I asked, I don't know if you heard it, Chief, when I left. In corporate America and other places, there is a whistleblower law that protects whistleblowers from being retaliated against. Mm. And I want to know now, do we have that? As a, a thing about the city of Mount Vernon, do we have that, or do we have that for the Mount Vernon Police Department? Because since we've been doing this for six years, since um, May June um, 2014, several people have been retaliated against who have spoken against the government in Mount Vernon, and they've, several people have been retaliated against. Several people who were quote unquote maybe whistleblowers have been seriously retaliated against. So do we not have? And if we don't. Then our city council, and we need to go to our city council, and we like we need this because Absolutely. Absolutely. everybody believes that we need to think about corruption. Everybody believes everybody believes there's corruption in the city and the police department. Everybody, every side, everybody believes that mayors agreed to that. The police commission, everybody said there's there's corruption. So the only way corruption gets stamped out is if your whistleblowers are bold enough to come out. Now, by, by not protecting Bovell, and this is bigger than po Bovell, and I want to keep this out there too, because for another cop sitting there that's sick and tired and frustrated of what's going on, and they see what's going on with Bovell, they're going to be like, yo, I don't want that shit. I don't want to deal with that shit. I'm not going to go through that. I don't want to go through that. And they see no protection against him, and he's out on the island by himself. Why would you sign up for that? Why would you put your family through that? You know what I'm saying? You don't see this dude ain't getting protected, and he got press conferences and all kinds of stuff speaking up. The press speaking up for him, and that, and, and, you know, he's still getting retaliated against. Why would I put me and my family through that? So you know, we need to put something in place if there isn't for whistleblowers, and if there is, then we need to make sure that it is. It is. It, but, it is. Uh, but AJ, you know what I'm also concerned about is somebody. Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Whistleblower policies don't work in small town settings because the audience is full of eager replacement. That may be a good point. And then he said the closest thing, the closest thing we get is social media and watch them. Okay. Go ahead, Atif. I'm sorry, you were saying something. Yeah, but no, I was gonna you, say you though, just start go ahead. It's it's also the 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 um the things that are coming out is what concerns me. And I think the latest with, you know, uh, tape that concerned me was how uh, officers were allowing um, one of a, a gunman to ride around looking for some, looking for yeah. a shooter, looking for someone to, you know, to retaliate against. And that concerns me, you know, uh, how many other shootings were permitted by that Mount Vernon police department, you know, or how many other gu gunmen were given uh, immunity uh, in the city of Mount Vernon to do whatever they want and at the cost of other lives that have gone uh, unsolved 
uh, that uh, at the cost of lives that have died and their murders have gone unsolved. So, you know, these tapes raise a lot of concern. They raise a lot of concern. And um, what's also concerning is the lack of communication from City Hall in response to these allegations. AJ. Right. Right. So, so, so I just want Bob, I saw Bob face with concern. So I don't know if you saw the latest Gothamist article. In there, there was a tape where an officer was talking about a particular person, and they named the person who had, they somebody came and shot up the spot, like came after him. And then the cops allowed, because he was uh, being investigated by DEA, so they allowed him to ride around for over a month yep. um, to look for the people who who shot at him to go get them. And the Mount Vernon Police Department pulled him over, and he had a young man and his son or something in the back seat. They knew that he was carrying and let him continue to ride around. This is what an officer said. Bovell was talking to another officer, and the officer said, not knowing he was being taped, said all of this. And 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 this is this is what has caused a lot of concern for a lot of people because I've gotten a lot of calls about that as well. A lot of people were concerned that this is, you know, this is and this goes on with the other the other tape where they were bringing in a suspect for a uh, quality of life uh, crime, and he said, "Yo, look, I got like sixty rocks in my pocket. I need you to hide them." And he calls his supervisor, and the supervisor tells him to hide them. He takes the officer. If they take the, the, the individual into police, they, they process them, give him an R R, and on the way out the door, they give him back his rocks. His supervisor says, yo, did he have anything on him? And he said, yeah. He said, did you hide it? He said, yeah. He said, did you give it back to him? He said, yeah. He said, good job. Oh, my God. You see what I'm saying? These are some of the things that cops were saying to Bovell, not knowing they were being recorded. And there's supposed to be 28 hours of tape altogether. We've only heard maybe three or four. <laughs> you know, so, yes. So I'm okay. I'm, Go ahead, I'm Bob. Not, Go ahead. not fully familiar with the, all of the allegations. Yeah, I'm gonna, say I'm, gonna, that now. I'm gonna send you the, the tapes in the in the stories. Go ahead. I just wanted you guys to know that Mount Vernon does have a whistleblower protection policy as part of. But explicitly prohibits, yes, explicitly prohibits any kind of retaliatory action being taken against a person because of some act of um, corruption or other, you know, illegal. Action. So, so who do you go to if you are the whistleblower and you're being retaliated against? Who do you report that to? So this was, I think this was supposed to fall under the purview of the Inspector General of, of the when city. had one, right. right. And okay. I know that there's still some disputes and fights that are taking place over the Inspector General. But I had a sense that the Inspector General's office actually had managed to resume its operations towards the tail end of former mayor's Thomas's administration, because if I'm not mistaken, they actually issued a report that found that Mayor Thomas had violated some of the um, code of conduct when he failed to file his financial disclosures in full. As a matter of fact, he made the ruling and a determination, and they imposed a fine, actually. If I'm not mistaken, right. they imposed a $5,000 fine that was subject to a law um, dispute. I want to I want to address Daniel Terry real quick and just shortly. Um, there is no debate. Black Westchester and the people before politics has never stated that all cops were bad. Um, we do believe that the majority of the cops go in to do their job and not to violate policy and procedure. Um, I started off the show giving the Yonkers police props for apprehending a black man with a gun who shot in the air five times, and they apprehended him and didn't kill him. I gave, so we give props to the police. There are obviously, and there are bad apples in our police department. The mayor has said it, the police commissioner has said it, and we have said it. And those bad apples need to go. And Officer Rovell exposed, 
the office of Bovella is exposing some of those bad apples and there is nothing that the city is doing to have his back. There is nothing, and, and I have much respect for Mayor Sean Patterson Howard. And I have to say, I would like to hear, this is AJ Woodson speaking and she can call me after the show. I would like to hear more from her on we're not going to tolerate retaliation against this young man or th that the office of the mayor has this young man's back or something like that. Because from the top, you know what I'm saying? A word from the top means a lot because the commissioner works at your, the commissioner works at your, at your um, pleasure. If it's not your pleasure for him to work no more, he don't work no more. And those people who are talking about work under the commissioner. So I would like to see something from the top. Now, I know you got your hands full with a whole lot of things. I know coronavirus and all that, but in this one situation, I do believe there are some immediate things that can be taken, some immediate steps that can be taken to set the tone that this will not be tolerated. And I have not seen that. Much Thank respect, you. Commissioner Glenn Scott. Talk to him almost every a couple of times a week. Offer my assistance and anything I can do to give him information and stuff about previous cases and stuff. Yo, but I would like to see more. This young man, life is on the line. And I can't stress this part enough. He can't wait till Mimi Roca takes over in January, takes a month or so to get her feet wet and acclimated to the whole situation. It is the end of September. Anything can happen between September and January and February, especially if it's true that he called for backup once so far recently, and they were very slow. This is starting to remind me of Serpico. You understand what I'm saying? He has to depend on cops when he got to bust a door or something or some gut. They got to have his back, and if they are retaliating against him or whatever, his life is in danger. And, and roll call, they, according to Bovell and his attorney, the, they addressed him from roll call as the rat. You know what I'm saying? So that gives free reign for all the people, all the subordinates of that person to, 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 to say whatever and, and attack him as well. You can't have it both ways. You can't say you want the good cops to speak up and then don't have the back of the cook cop. And that's for the community and everybody. Somebody you need to be standing behind a good cop, and and if the if these were without allegations, if these were allegations without anything, I've heard more tapes than what has come out. There is enough, and I've talked to Mimi Wilco, and just as as a as a somebody in the legal field, not you know in her position that she's going to have, and other people, uh, uh, actually one or two other district attorneys, and they said there's enough on them for them to have called in the officers and questioned and for for a conversation to move <laughs> forward. To, you know, I'm not even charging them to have come because they're saying it's hearsay. If you got names and dates and stuff, if you, they could call these people in for questioning. And I'm not seeing too much of anything. And as I said, if anything happens to this young man, it's on everybody's hands. Their blood will be on everybody's hands. That's all I'm saying. So um, changing the subject real quick. So Bob, my cousin informed me, so my cousin informed me, my grandfather and her dad are first cousins. <laughs> so that dude, that's the only enduring old mystery of right tonight. Now. Yeah, is that, huh? The enduring mystery the, of tonight's show. Yeah, the other mystery of the show, yeah. We're trying to figure out, we have a, my cousin has a cousin that's Bob's cousin too. So we're trying to figure out how we're related and maybe being Bob are distant cousins or something. So, so, so our, our cousin was, a, our uncle was a freedom rider in, in back in the days, in the 60s, one of the freedom riders. Right. So, 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 no, so anyway, you, that's you another. That's, to figure it out. Yeah. At the appropriate time. Yeah. Look forward to it. Reality story. is procedure. Reality is procedure is eight for breakfast. Pr procedure, policies, plan, all of this stuff is gets eaten up for breakfast. The system it's the systematic, you know, the problem with this situation in Mount Vernon, and this is me speaking explicitly for me. A lot of times I deal with these police situations. We're talking about white cops doing things in black neighborhoods and not caring and not being from our neighborhood and not knowing our neighborhoods. We're talking about a black city, black run city, black mayor, 
black police commissioner, hell, black superintendent of schools, black, 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 black. You know what I'm saying? In a in a predominantly black city, and a lot of these people are from the city. You know what I'm saying? And it's right. like, yo, if it can happen here, it can happen. If we can't get justice here, how do we expect to get justice in the Scarsdale or a Rybrook or something like that that don't look like us? That's 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 like we should be leading the way. And as as the city of Mount Vernon, that's 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 just my personal opinion, and and that's AJ Woodson. Um, um, coming to the close of the show, last words. Anybody want to say you know, anything? I didn't ask. You want to speak on a piece? I know I didn't give you a lot of talking time, but no, no, it's good. You know, it's good to share some stuff, though. And I'm um, just want to thank you guys for having me on, and I hope that uh, Bovell uh, gets all the support he needs because we do need to support him. We do need to. Uh, uh, do something as far as the city is concerned. They need to step up and uh, do something. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, Glenn Scott needs to resign. Let me just say this. Playing devil's advocate, for real, keeping it real. So both of them have been there nine months. So you can't expect anybody to get rid of decades and decades and decades of corruption and and, and, and this misconduct in, in, in months. And then you did have a coronavirus pandemic, which put rock the world on his shoulders. But that being said, there are things that could be done that I have not seen done. And I'm not going to write them off, write everybody off now. Let's see next year when the coronavirus is not the thing. Let's see in the second year what gets done before I become more critical um, I'm, I think there are things that can be done now, and I've talked to both Sean and Glenn and spoke to both of them about the things that I think can be done now. I don't, I don't, uh, things that I'm not seeing done. I don't know if, I don't know if writing them off, I believe that Glenn, and I've had constant conversations with Glenn. I think he's dropped the ball in some places, and I told him. I think there's some things he could have done that he didn't do. Yeah. Um, and, but, but I, I, I think, I think he is trying and I want to see more. And I'm going to give him a little, see, this is one of those where you give somebody a long leash. So when you hang, and they hang themselves, they hang themselves. When you go after them, you, there's nothing that they can debate at all because you're giving them a very long leash. You, you understand what I'm saying? Before you just take them out, of the one of those, give somebody a long leash. So I'm going to wait to see what happens in 2021 in the first six months or so and see if there's any difference. Amen, AJ. The, the, the voice of reasoning. I love it. Well, I mean, everybody's supposed to express their, yo, know, there's nothing wrong. And for anybody on here who does not agree with a teeth, we're not going to have, if you can, if you can have a debate, like we've had a debate in the beginning about police procedures. Um, if you can have a debate and we can all exchange ideas and facts and be respectful, we can have that conversation all day. If you're just coming on here to just attack his character, regardless of what you feel that he did, we're not going to have that on this show. You understand what I'm saying? For none of my guests, for none of my people that are on this show. You know what I'm saying? But we can sit here and debate or me, you, him can meet privately and have a conversation if you want. Absolutely. But that, we just, I'm just, that goes for all of our guests. That goes for all of our guests. So he's entitled to his opinion. The, go ahead, Bob. I, I, I was just going to say, AJ, I, I think you are being too kind yeah. to our elected officials in suggesting yes. that we can wait until after the COVID-19 right. epidemic has been passed. And, and I mean, well, it was just, you know. You might not have meant it literally. We're gonna wait another year, no. but no, it's you know, absolutely not. I mean, I want to suggest to everyone that one of the reasons why we see corruption rampant in our society is because too often our political leaders are hesitant to tackle the difficult issues that they're elected to resolve and address, and given just how disruptive reports of police brutality and misconduct have proven themselves to be today and across throughout American history. There should be no reason for any 
official who has authority to review the conduct that is alleged in the city of Mount Vernon to wait for any reason at all. Um, you have a job to do. Let me say explicitly, because I just saw Derek Thompson, apparently Derek Thompson is the chairperson of the Public Safety Committee in the city of Mount Vernon. And since this oh, so is a matter, okay. and since it, since it is a matter that does fall under the purview of his committee, it is such a serious allegation, it would leave me absolutely puzzled why they would not begin to take some preliminary steps to hold full public hearings. Exactly. You know, all of the officers are required to come in and give testimony under oath, under penalty of some sort of criminal punishment if they commit perjury. We need to get to the bottom of this. We're not going to get to the bottom of this matter and really put behind us the um, unrest that police brutality is causing all across the country. If in the face of such charges, someone can't muster up the courage to begin to hold people accountable. Well, I just, well I, if you, if you heard me, one, one of the things I said is there are actions, no, no, there are actions that can be done now that are not being done. And that from the DA down, calling these people in, it's enough to call people in to, to, to have what you're talking to, to, to there's enough. Um, a lady said, could they be waiting for after the election? I want to repeat that. Officer Bobel's life is in danger and might not be able to wait. Anything can happen to him from now to January or February after the new DA gets acclimated. She doesn't walk in the door knowing everything. So my point to that is, and I did say, if anything happens, blood is on the hands of all the elected officials who did not do nothing. And I was clear about that. This is breaking so I'm, news. I'm holding, you know, this I, is breaking I, I, news. yes, while being fair, huh? Yeah, while, be, while being fair, I am still holding everybody accountable. I'm holding everybody accountable. And just trust me. And when when I drop the gauntlet on everybody, I'm giving them rope to hang themselves. Like there's not gonna be no yo, you didn't you waited too early, you came in too early, you didn't do this, you didn't give them chance. Yo, we're giving you all the chances in the world. Your first 90 days, your first all this, your first people, we're giving you all the chances in the world. So when I come, I'm coming hard. Well, but I'm watching now, and I'm, and I'm actively see. Even with Richard Thomas and them, I had conversations with them first. I was able to talk to them on the behind the scenes first. Had kind, you know, probably constant, constant conversations with Rich and all of them. And Rich just wasn't getting it or wasn't listening. And at some point, I had to take it to the public because I tried to reach out to you first and give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm having these conversations now. You understand what I'm saying? And if they don't do what they got to do, then it, it's, it's going to be what it's going to be. So I was trying to be fair, but I'm still being fair and balanced, and I'm holding them with an iron fist as well. So don't, don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing changed. Well, no, I, I understand, AJ. We all have our own position. So I just want <laughs> right, to right. forcefully articulate the position of those who insist that action needs to be taken immediately. I do want to remind everyone who's watching that myself, at least, and others have been far more incensed at the city government of Mount Vernon for far less. I mean, Absolutely. we have demanded rightly that the mayor's office and other authorized agencies in the city of Mount Vernon take action when municipal employees have violated our social media policy and have um, expressed hateful ideas towards others. This is so much more serious. I think that um, although, I mean, I, look, I, I got what you're saying, AJ, right? And, you know, look, they're just practical constraints. <laughs> That people do operate right. on. Yeah, with and them. let me and let me also say, and this nobody's nobody's off the limits. The governor has 
traditionally failed the city of Mount Vernon. And anytime he was called in to investigate any kind of corruption or police brutality or criminality, he has done nothing for the city of Mount Vernon. Exactly. Uh, the, 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 the attorney general, um, Chris James, has done nothing to investigate anything in the city of Mount Vernon. Situations where they have the ability to push the button or or push an investigation forward or you know put some kind of oversee you know over, over some situations through the last three administrations the governor hasn't done anything from from Ernie Davis to calls from Marine the, the um, um Deborah Reynolds Richard Thomas he was the only person who could take any of them out of office temporarily while the investigations were going on and he has not done anything. So I just want to, I'm talking about from the top down. Nobody's, nobody. And it's talking about more than just the situation. But why, AJ? That's the question. Well, the first time I get the official answer, you're going to know. <laughs> this is what I want to know. What is everybody afraid of? Let, why let, don't let me touch Mount Vernon? Let me, let, let me posit a, a reason. Because I think it's very clear. Sounds and good. this is an issue that was not fully aired when the candidates for chairperson of the Westchester Democratic Party came on the show a couple of weeks ago. One of the questions that was in my mind that I never really got a chance to answer, ask is all right, was um, whether the party would begin to take a more forceful public role in trying to address some of the real problems that afflict the city of Mount Vernon in particular. Um, the reason why I think this is a necessary question because many of us have concluded and obviously starting with me, that one of the reasons why we had such turmoil in the city government, Mount Vernon city government under Mayor Thomas's administration is because too few of our party leaders were willing to take a public stance and tell the mayor or the other branches of government when they were wrong and what needed to be done to redress this. The reason why is because the party does not want to have his dirty laundry aired in public for fear that it might embarrass them politically and cause them to pay a price. Right now, the party is putting the in its narrow political interests above the interests of municipalities in Westchester County, most importantly, the city of Mount Vernon, to get straightened out the deep problems of corruption. Everyone in the Westchester, from, from, from the executive, every elected official in Westchester County, whether they're serving in our state government, in the county government, or in local government, needs to raise a cry right now as to why we can let such a dramatic example of corruption go unexamined and why we should wait for district attorney Scarpino. There's nothing that requires this. The first line of defense and the protection of order in the city of Mount Vernon are the elected officials in the city of Mount Vernon. To do anything less than to hold full hearings is to abdicate their responsibility to get to the bottom what's going on. The longer they continue to drag their feet, AJ, the more it is going to promote cynicism. Because people are concluding that the political class here in the United States is self-serving and um, insincere, <laughs> which is a nice way of saying full of shit. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, if Mount Vernon doesn't launch investigations, Public investigations. Pull these people on the carpet publicly. Expend some political capital to reassure residents of the city of Mount Vernon exactly. that 
things are under control and that our elected officials are performing the role that they have been um, called on to do. And that's how you build your image as a politician, as a community leader, not by going to cocktail parties and uh, conventions in New Jersey and Brooklyn and uh, traveling all around New York State when you could be here solving your own issues, washing your own dirty laundry. Hmm. I don't get it. I'd I like to say one more thing too. For, 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 for the residents, <laughs> people are only gonna care about what you care about. If you don't keep, continue to make your noise, make some noise, and, and, and if you don't, like who's gonna do your, your, people are not gonna care if you don't care. You have to make your elected officials move. You have to be in their face. You have to stay on them. That is your responsibility if you want change. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna come in this city and be the savior and just clean everything up. It takes all of us. And you're gonna have to stay on them and make them do their job that you feel that they should do. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like they're not doing that, you need to express that at your city council meetings, you know, on your mayor live feeds, um, on their town hall forums that they be having. You need to, the, the, at City Hall, at the police department, wherever. You need you need to step up. It can't just be a few voices. The community, if you're tired, you, you're going to keep going through this until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Like the community has a role as far as, as all it is. Because I'm going to tell you, people in Scarsdale would let this happen because they ain't having it. In other cities, that right. they ain't going to let this stuff happen because they ain't having it. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right. They not having it. You know, there's some stuff that happens because we allow it to happen. Not so me. I just want to, you know, the whole 360 on the whole thing, the people have a role too. Go ahead, Bob. The central <laughs> issue at stake in the political struggle that's taking place right now over police treatment of black folk, especially here in the United States, though not exclusively, is whether or not police actually are subject to civilian control and review. That's what's going on here. You have significant elements in police departments all across the United States of America. And I'm going to say it, mostly white officers who insist that somehow or the other, their conduct should not be subject to review by elected officials. I've heard some of this sentiment expressed by many former police officers in the city of Mount Vernon, who I know, some white, some black. And, you're, and this is not acceptable in a democratic society. Those who are entrusted with the use of force to maintain order are especially subject to control by civilian authority. That's what's really at stake. Why wouldn't civilian authorities who were duly elected by the electorate review this case? It's absolutely unconscionable that they wouldn't. They need to drag, they need to start subpoenaing people and yep. drag them before the city council. And if they do not respond to the peanut subpoena, then they need to impose the maximum penalty on them. Exactly. If you are a police officer and you take a pledge to uphold the law, then presumably you two are subject to it. Go ahead, Bob. And that's it. <laughs> like it, it shouldn't be any question, Adrian. It shouldn't be any question on the part of the, of the police to comply. You having a problem. With nor should it be any Absolutely. problem for elected officials to exercise such authority. If you don't do it, who will? So, so, so in closing, we had a question and I see if I propose it to both of y'all. How can the citizens help? Become more engaged, see? get more involved. But see, you know, the thing is, is it's kind of hard to do. How do you attract good health we have a with problem. all that's going on okay, in the ahead. city? Hello? 
AJ? Yeah, I think we're having a Wi-Fi issue. Go ahead. Start, start again. Go ahead. No, I just said, you know, just takes more engagement. Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear oh, me? Oh, man. Go ahead. Take it away, Bob. Yes. Right, I was just saying. I mean, I, I think you hit it on the head, Atif. Get involved, right? Get more involved. Yeah. Luis, if... Uh, if a hundred people came to the city council chamber for the next um, bi-weekly meeting and every one of them demanded that a public hearing investigating this matter be held forth, I think that would be a start. Absolutely. And if they don't, I mean, I mean, I think it's a serious matter. Um, <clears throat> some may think that it's so serious that it would warrant some sort of civil disobedience right in the chambers. There are plenty of times when American citizens go into the halls of their legislator or executive offices and engage in acts of civil disobedience when an injustice um, is uh, not being addressed. That's a possibility. But, I mean, yeah, someone... We have Wi-Fi problems, so we're going to wrap this up real quick. Yeah, I got to... Um, I don't know if Joseph Murray can hear me. Um, Joe, Joe, if you want any last words um, to address anything we just talked about, then we're going we're gonna to close this down, because um, I guess I'm having Wi-Fi problems. Um, we, we were actually 21 minutes over over the uh, the limit over what we started. So, hey, right, Joe, your mic's not on. Now I can't hear Joe. Bob, I could hear him just barely. He's in Can you hear him? Just a little tiny bit. He's something's. I heard, could hear him just a bit. I don't know if he could turn up his mic. Yeah, it's on Mac. The mic is on Mac. All right, I'm sorry. I, how about this? Is this better? A little bit, Joe. We can barely hear you. I can hear you, though. Okay, I'll be brief. I just want to say thank you because you guys have given this, you and George Joseph, the more people talk about this and the more we keep it on the front burner, the better chance we have of getting results. So I want to thank you all for keep this conversation alive. And I, I got to tell you, the stakes couldn't be higher. My client's life is on the line. Once it was revealed that he is the whistleblower, the retaliation has gotten worse. And there are a lot of officers who are in the crosshairs of his complaints that are now worried about what's going to happen from here on out. So we have to keep the pressure on that action is taken right away. That's why we can't wait for January. We want Scarpino to recuse himself so we can get immediate action. But that doesn't stop the mayor and the police commissioner from taking immediate action. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Joe. So it's nice to see you again, Joe. Yes, yes. Um, it's been a while both for both of us. I see we both got a little gray, grayer oh, since then. So it's nice. So Joe, I know that you are concerned about Officer Bovell's safety and well-being at this point. I think AJ might have asked this question to you when you were off air before. Um, he'll weigh in if he, if he needs anything else. But are there any immediate indications of hostility or other kind of untoward acts from fellow police officers that is causing him fear and trepidation. Yes, there was an incident that happened. I really don't want to discuss this publicly, but you shared something with me that you, there was an incident that happened. I don't want to share it publicly, but there was an incident that happened that caused grave concern to me uh, that happened on patrol. Uh, especially it, it was involving an arrest situation. 
so uh, it is happening. I don't want to relate all those details, but it is happening, and it is of the utmost concern for me, having been a retired police officer myself, I know exactly what situation he's in. So also, Joe, you seem to believe that it would be beneficial if there was some sort of intervention, even of a preliminary kind, by the mayor and by the commissioner. Have you actually submitted a formal request on behalf of your client for them to take some sort of remedial steps to make sure to, you know he, he's not mistreated in any way? Well, I mean, there's nothing I could do as far as uh, there's no there's no rules and policy in place to account for that. You know, it's illegal to retaliate. But what I'm concerned with is the discreet retaliation of somebody like Antonini with his connections in the so-called underworld and drug dealers. If you remember that show about, um, uh, what's his name, Serpico, once it was revealed that he was wearing a wire and testifying, he ended up getting shot in the face while taking down a door. So I'm concerned that Antonini with his connections worried about Bovell continuing to make noise, he may try to call in a favor and have Bovell taken out. It's a legitimate concern that I have. So Joe, I, I've got to tell you, I'm astonished and gravely concerned because you've suggested in your last comments that indeed there is a possibility that um, forces from the underworld and from the streets could well be recruited to try to silence Officer Bovell. So it seems like you believe that the this is not. This is no joke. This guy Antonini plays fast and, and, and crazy with these drug dealers. They owe him favors. He's got informants that work for him. They were making illegal arrests. He's got people that he knows who owe him, and he's kind of a heavy-handed guy to begin with. So my concern is that he's going to take some kind of action to silence Bovell once and for all. And I'm saying it now, and I'm saying it loud and clear for anyone that's listening, because I, I, I can't stress it enough. If, God forbid, something happens to him, they're going to deal with me personally. I mean, I will, I'm going to say in light of what you're, you've shared with the audience, Joe, it would seem to me to be um, untenable for the city government not to take more forceful steps to get this matter resolved. Um, failure to do so in the face of a public warning of the kind that has been issued by the officer's lawyer would essentially mean that the powers that be would have blood on their hands should anything happen to him. So. say something to stop it. Well, he did that for the community. Now the community needs to step up for him. Don't they want police officers like him? Don't they want guys like him out on patrol? I want a guy like that in my neighborhood. Why aren't they rising up demanding, demanding that justice prevail here, that more than a post change because with all the evidence that came out about Antonini, he got a post change. He didn't get his, the, the, the classification called modified assignment. They take your gun and shield and they bench you. You're now on death duty under investigation. They won't even do that in spite of the story after story after story. And I'll also point out George Joseph, 
convictions, of course, is probably the most ethical reporter that I know. He fact-checked everything. He went out there, broke the sea level, found the people who were discussed in the incident that were on the tape, reported on it. Why can't the police commission or the DA do the same thing or at least call him and ask him for their phone numbers? Right. are available. Bring them in, file your charges, strip them of his gun and shield, take the power away from him. Right now, he's still an active member of the department. It wouldn't be hard for him to recruit his cronies in the underworld to take action against Bozell, especially that he feels he may be on the way out. Why right. Well, Joe, listen, I can tell you the few minutes we've had on air together have already been um, provided a lot of intriguing revelations for me personally that I'm sure our audience, many of our audience members are unaware of as well and would like to hear more. But unfortunately, because of the technical issue that we're having with sound, I don't want to keep you on too long because your voice is considerably muffled. I know I'm barely... Um, making out what you're saying, uh, as is probably true for the audience as well. I know you've been on the show before, but I'm sure AJ Damon and the rest of the Black Rochester team, as well as our audience, um, really thinks that there's a lot more that needs to be said about this matter. So I hope you will expect some sort of invitation from AJ about coming on air when things are operating properly um, to see if we can give this issue the type of attention that it really does require. And we want to thank you. I see AJ's coming back on now. Um, AJ, I was going to let Joe go. Is that all right, AJ? But it sounds like... Joe, speak for me. Talk, talk again, Joe. Hello, hello. Say that again. <laughs> Joe, you was in that class, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we learned it together is what I like to tell We you. learned it together. You want me to tell what? I might have actually told AJ that about that yeah. what happened. I, I I have to confess. You want me to tell what we'll save that one because it's yeah. yes, yes. It's it, it yes, it was a lot of fun and an important learning lesson. Um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but AJ, I don't know. Joe's voice is still low. No. So I, maybe I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I know. And, 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 yeah, the voice is still low. We're gonna we're gonna end this. We're oh, half an hour over. We 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 constantly um bringing him on. We're constantly um covering this. We're gonna cover this to the end. We're gonna talk to everybody involved. You will hear more from him here. I do want to add the one thing that was said at the press conference that just happened the other day that really impressed me. And I will close with this. Kenneth Chamberlain Jr., whose father was killed by the police, the White Plains police, he turned around and looked at Officer Bovell and he said, I wish there was an officer like you when they showed up at my house, my father's house. Maybe he would still be alive. I think that says a lot. And I'm just going to leave it there. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Sorry for about any technical difficulties. I think the Wi-Fi started acting up at the end. Um, um, thanks, Atif Khalil, for coming on. Uh, of course, Lorraine Lopez for holding for holding us down. It's always great when we have our, our, my, uh, our publisher, David Jones, on, um, and, and we can hear from him. Um, but we thank everybody for tuning in. This has been another COVID-19 um, home edition of Black West Chester presents the People Before Politics radio show. Um, you could be doing anything else and you just decided to ride with us tonight. We greatly appreciate it. Check all um, the stories we're talking about. They're all available on blackwestchester.com. Uh, if you can't find something, email us blackwestchester at gmail.com. Um, this is the last week to advertise in the October 
15th issue, which is coming out Friday, October 9th. So this is the last week to advertise. If you want to advertise, hit us at blackwestchester at gmail.com. Um, with that, until next week, peace. Yes, Joe. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Joe, we're off air now. Yes. I think. So, Joe, was that you? It was you because, you know, I've told AJ this story. I've told several people this story about how I'm missing. Huh? That was a fun class. <laughs> it was, but you want me to tell what Joe and, you know, one of the, th I said it was a very important lesson yeah. because you were right to point out my misinterpretation of what standard deviation meant. And you were, you were very courteous and kind, you know. Um, you weren't trying to embarrass me, but you can imagine to get it wrong as an instructor is embarrassing. And I had to tell, I've so told many people, I'm going to tell my aunt, um, cause she knows the story. And I always tell her, oh, I had to.